Oh, the Eagles basketball is in the air. Live in the Eagles nest on the campus of Cal State LA. Tonight, the Cal State LA Big Eagles take on the Cal State Monterey Bay Adders in a CCLA doubleheader. Michael Lennox back here with you tonight. Cal State LA is coming off a win last night over Cal State East Bay. They beat Cal State East Bay 53 to 38. They're coming tonight with a very tough challenge. There's a Cal State Monterey Bay team with 6 and 1 on the year. We were running the CCLA. Great Eagles come into this game 8 and 4 overall, 3 and 2 in the CCLA after yesterday's win. That 3 and 2 record gets them into a red game, tied for third place in the CCLA with four other teams. They're only a half game behind Cal State Monterey Bay. But this is an important game. Cal State Monterey Bay is picked to win the CCLA in the preseason coaches poll. The Great Eagles are picked to finish second. So, according to the coaches, these are the top three teams in the conference. But the course is also. A little bit maybe of a revenge game for last year. The Great Eagles lost to Cal State Monterey Bay in the championship game of the CCA Conference Tournament. Of course, the Great Eagles did a magical run through the tournament, making great comebacks against Cal Poly Pomona and UC San Diego. And then they almost did the same thing against Cal State Monterey Bay. They were down 20 points in the second half and came back to tie it, only to lose on kind of a controversial basket at the end. And Dickie Jefferson had picked that with no time left. Of course, you can't fault the officials. It took several replays to find out the ball was actually still on her fingertips when she picked, had, when the red light went off. And also, there might have been a question of whether, whether uh, it was a traveling ball. The first shot did not hit the rim, and she got her own rebound. But of course, those are things that attack the ball in the heat of the moment. There was no instant replay, unfortunately, in Division II because games aren't televised normally. That's the way things go. The Gold Eagles end up as the number seven seed after that defeat, and of course, lost to last to Anchor. In the regional. But this is a new year and a new team. And Pastor Valley is certainly looking to find out how good they really are tonight. This Pastor Valley Bay team should certainly give them a quite a challenge. But last year, when these teams played the Eagles last, the Bay Eagles played by far the best game of the year. They won 79 to 64, and it was quite a memorable game because they dominated from start to finish. They really ran Monterey Bay off the court. Forcing turnovers and getting layups and seemingly a layup during the entire game. They went from beginning to end, which is something that usually did not happen in big games last year. And of course, this year the Golden Eagles have had trouble going off the slow starts also. But they might have to be on top of the game tonight against the veteran Monterey Bay team that returns a lot of key players, including many of the starters. Speaking of starters, let's get to that starting lineup right now. First, the Cal State Monterey Bay. It's pretty easy to figure out this thing, right? Like they started the same five players every game this season, all seven of their games. So they're, they're not going to change anything now. They started one guy, number 13, Nicky Beckman, a 5'8 sophomore from Dublin. He's the first year player of the team. He comes from Oregon College. So the other guy, it's back number 33, Harry Hampton, a 5'9 junior from Ventura. He, of course, is a player that was all last year's team, along with most of these other players. Then at the other guard spot, there's number 22, Jessica Fountain, a 5 senior from Chino Hills. This is her fourth year with the Otters. So she started out as a freshman, she's a senior now. She's a defensive specialist. She had not score much, but she's not there for scoring. She's kind of like their version of Marion Jenkins. She forces turnovers, she averages only three steals a game. So that should be an interesting matchup if Marion Jenkins takes off against her during the game. And at the fourth guard spot, is number 11, Stephanie Crazel, another veteran. Five eight senior from Manhattan Beach. This is also this is his second year. He was also from UT Santa Barbara, and she's a good one. She's definitely one of the Otters' most important players and floor leader. And so the then forward spot number thirty four, Dickie Jefferson, six foot senior from Palmdale. Of course, Jefferson had that basket last year that won the CCA championship for Cal State Monterey Bay. She's in the second year. The head coach for the Otters is Renee Jimenez. He's 83 and 38 in her fifth year as head coach. She certainly led the team to much success. The team certainly didn't have much success before she took over, and she was turning this program around and turned it into a player powerhouse. Her assistant was Tina Sandinova. Now, for the task of the end, Kelly Ryan. First of all, five, Kelly Lewis, five cents in here from Santa Clarita. Also, she's going to try to listen to Hanson, a five cents in from Loba Linda. So at the third guard spot, so 23, Lacey Gibbons, a 5 point senior from Hanford. So at the forward spot, tonight is going to 55 to Hampton Hanson, a 5, a 6 point senior from Lake Forest. And at the other guard spot, number 11, Sandra Williams, a 6 point senior from Chicago, Illinois. So the Gold Eagles go with five seniors in tonight's starting lineup. Very interesting. I believe that's the first time this year, you know, Jones has done that. 
who likes to get some presence in there to combat this veteran Monterey Bay team. I'll talk more about the game in a minute, but right now we're about to have the National Anthem. So I will pause for a minute while we have the National Anthem here in the Eagles Nest, and I'll be right back with the start of this game in a, in a minute. Here now is the National Anthem. And we are back. This game is a contest in styles, of course. That's the one of It's a very good defensive team. They lead the CCLA in point allowed. They only allow just over 51 points a game. That's the one, of course, wants to play up tempo. Four Eagles having 73 points a game. So this will be another contest in styles. Of course, if you were with us yesterday and heard the best game interview with Cassandra Williams, she said that they've got this all week with six defenders on the court to try and compare for these two tough defensive teams that they would face. That's what he's done in Brad Castle and Mono today. So we'll see if that practice really pays out here during the game. Play the match for being announced now. As I said, Castle and Mono today won the CCA type of tournament last year over Castle and Mono. They went on to the NCAA tournament just like the Gold Eagle. The West Eagles at UC San Diego. They lost in the first round also to Western Washington 65 to 58. They're so certainly looking to improve on that and win the conference this year. But right now, they're in second place at 3 and 1. Super State is the only team in the Great House at 5 and 0. They're in first place. So, Super State, interestingly enough, was not picked among the very top teams. But no surprise until far, they're undefeated down the road. Possibly one of the day has one loss. That's the San Francisco State this year. 86 and 1, no loss to San Francisco State, 49 to 38. San Francisco State's been somewhat of a pleasant surprise so far, really going in this conference. They're going to be also. Of course, one thing that we know is how to give all these trouble on up tempo teams. Yesterday, game against Costa Rica and the Pills, they won 78 to 66. They tied their season high in points, but they also gave up their most points they surrendered this year, 66. The Cal State Community Stairs. And if you remember back to that, so the Cal State Community Stairs game against the Gold Eagles last month, the Gold Eagles is a team that really is trying to pattern themselves after Cal State LA, which means they try to force turnovers and get out of their early transition and play a faster pace. And it looks like they did that against Monterey Bay with some success, even though the Otters did win the game. But that was Monterey Bay's first game since December 8th, so they might have been a little bit less than what they had to do for tonight. You remember last night, the Gold Eagles. Struggled mightily on offense. They only scored 15 points in the first half against Castro East Bay. They just could not get the ball in the basket. They finally got it going in the second half after being tied at 30. Cassandra Williams got them home. She scored 13 of the Golden Eagle last points in the final 7 minutes and 46 seconds of the game. That was 13 of the 17 points in the game. So he wants to win for them the victory. It's only a two consecutive three point plays. I believe we have a false toss there. We're going to toss it again. Toss the other one in the white uniform, of course, Brock Chen. Bottom of the day, one in the blue uniform, third Chen. We're underway. Hope you enjoy this one wherever you may be listening to it on the Toss the other one. Put the hands up and hit you. Bears the way up. Toss the other one. That's a boy. She was all by herself. Tough boat there. She couldn't make the way up. Hopefully, the audience came the other way. 
and I'm the first time starting that guy that I knew him. Yeah, I knew him after one more good ball, got him out of bounds. By Beckman, we're going through the ball of So both teams missed layups on the opening possession. Talk to the way, bring it up. The full team, Janelle Jones told her team to try and pick up the pace. It seemed like the Red Eagles finally did that in the second half yesterday. Well, that was success. Only Lacey did it. Lacey had to win a nice pass from Billy Lewis. Well, Lacey did it with a layup for the first pass of the game. She loved him. Red Eagle bench fine for defense. As the ball in the hand, by Beckman. Beckman gets a little bit of Jefferson, better by Hanson. Well, Beckman traveled. She didn't know which way she wanted to go. And she ends up moving her feet before she doubled. Boy, well, Coach Amanda has not wasted any time at all making substitutions already. Ashley Morgan on the 24th, five times a year from Warwick Park. That's the Warwick State country. Comes in the game up for a minute. 25 Debbie Mokes, a six foot senior from Lodi, comes in. So two quick substitutions are getting a minute in the rip on. That tells you how important the game this is. I feel like Long Janelle Jones wait for Long Shoe Lake for the substitutions. He's involved in the front court. He was over to Lisa Hansen. Hansen down by Beckman. Now with the Thunder Williams, he's going to be going around the perimeter. Now to Samantha hits the tennis center screen. She gets the ball now. In the first, back to Lewis, back to Lacey Gibbons. In the way to Hampton, she gets the ball and takes her hands and loses it. Beckman comes up with the garbage and will go the other way. Now back when Jim is all the way in the room, takes out the front net. Now it's back to Morgan. Morgan to Angel. Angel will have the ball in her hands a lot in this game. Angel for three with the hair ball. Trying to save the ball underneath. That net, that they tell Lewis, takes away from Bunch. Trying to push it up the other way. Now Lewis hesitates. Gets it out to Lisa Hanson. So that gets a ball to the back. She gets the ball. Up the end, lays up. Oh, lays up the rim. I don't know how that didn't go in. That right there, Morgan gets the rebound. For a couple of close layups missed by the Gold Eagles, so they're really going. But they still have two to help them. The others have not stopped yet. And Beckman, the left hand from right on him. Now Gibbons picks her up. Now take the way. Take the way, Stanley. Lewis gets the ball. Right on two the other way. Take the way to traffic. Up and over. Lewis, not the way he's at all. Nice play by Taylor Lewis. Look like she's in trouble there with two defenders in front of her, but she found a little weaver way through him. I think a nice little scoop shot for the layup. Lewis had a couple of big three pointers from second half yesterday. He's been a horrible shooting slump so far this year. His upside not close. The men's looking over the league and stabbed by Lewis. Boy, that ball just laying on the ground. No good leader went over to rebound it. It went right for months. So that'll take months to the line. She two free throws to try to get the others on the board. Then take the free throw. Two more subs come in for the others. Actually, Holcomb comes back in. Jefferson will wait to check back in until after the second free throw. So, two bodies can come in for the shooter. The others are here. 67% free throw shooting for him. So, not great. Certainly, the world leaders see a better percentage than that. And Jefferson does check in after the second free throw is made. So I'm making a 14 game, 2 and a half minutes for the week one. And Williams is probably going to the front court. Looks like the Otters are playing about a 2 3 defense, 2 3 zone. As Hanson gets up the three point line, Samantha Hanson, after Lisa Hanson. Got to get the entry of the two Hanson, Zion and Lisa Samantha Hanson. Puts up no basket for the back side range. So Samantha Hanson was able to do that up and under moved earlier for a layup that she could have to date. That's how the entry of the two took too many steps to do it. A early turnover. Now the Otters bring it up. Found them. There's like nobody takes her. Now, Anthony Wilkinson fumbles it out of bounds and then throws the cast in the line. But she'll figure the Otters are pretty sure handed with the basketball. The only one would be about 17 and a half turnovers per game. That's a pretty good number. As Gibbons gets on with the Samantha Hanson, she somehow grabs it, gets off to Sandra Williams. That's the baseline. Really needs to put it. No good. Samantha Hanson fights for the rebound. Goes off to Jefferson. Now Beckman took her the other way. Takes the pass. Now goes off to Jefferson for a running six footer. No good. So they're going to bounce off the front net and we're going to pass for the other way. So neither team will find the bucket here really going. 
kind of reminiscent of the game yesterday, but in the game yesterday, the EU team scored for about three minutes. It was just a titanic struggle for EU team to make a basket. And if you think you can have better luck at finding the better. But Monterey Bay doesn't score many points a game, but they certainly can score. They have offensive players that can score. So they can hit the box in. I think it's all the way. Yeah, he's been fair, and I believe it's all the legal spring once he got the help. Oh, a three-second violation. The turnover either way. And we saw the hair making a quick appearance. The goal may go for Casey Hampton. The hair started yesterday's game along with Kevin Riesabas. But the goal may go for the 2-3-4 today. That's a hair for him to make the As I said, you know, Jones, I believe, wants to start five seniors. Same comeback is left in Monterey Bay to you. That ball knocked out of bounds and will go too fast in a way. Good hustle by Lisa Hansen. Fourth of the turnovers. Three turnovers, three, two to four turnovers in Monterey Bay. And there we go. And three for the Golden Eagles. And they're just over four minutes into this first half. Back to Tom Lillian. Left it over to Gibbons. Gibbons to Lewis. Rips and cross court to Gibbons. Get him to the baseline, kicks it out to the hair. Now that the Lewis still ain't for three, up the hill, no good. Well, that's where they're going to hit it, and they're going to be rowdy. Now, the whole host is set up coming into the LA Bay. And it's going to be going up to the LA Bay. And it's going to be going up to the LA Bay. And it's going to be going up to the LA Bay. And now it's going to be going up to the LA Bay. And now it's going to be going up to the LA Bay. So a couple of new players in there now. Of course, Melba did start to put several games a year coming off the bench now. Larry Griffin keeps coming off that injury. Played for the first time yesterday in a month. Missed five games. As the ball came off, now it's stepped in the post. The Mounts. Mounts takes the whole shot. He jumped the ball. Listen, Hanson, how about that? So listen, Hanson got a hands on the shot. Picked it up to Melba. The Raiders are back on defense, though. Now it's Sonder Owen. Sonder Owen didn't want to marry Jenkins. Listen, Hanson, that guy's the baseline. Good for the Mavericks. They just passed. That's where they fought them. That's what I talked about. That is certainly something to watch on defensively. 16 seconds from the top clock. Didn't lose really another three or five, six seniors in that clock. That's her first appearance. The Raiders are fucking getting regular here and really going. As Williams gets the ball in balance from Alyssa Hansen. Jacob working to cut a screen. Then he gets the ball from Williams. He's double teamed in the corner. Gets in the loop to Alyssa Hansen. Fumbles the ball. Gives her the middle. Loses it and goes out of bounds. So there's only two seconds on the shot clock when that happened. The Golden Eagles are dazzled by that after. Now take us to a first media time limit. 1455 remaining in the first half. So far, this game is just like yesterday. Not much after. That's the only way we're moving forward to it. That's the only way we're going to For nearly six decades, we've been the educational part of Los Angeles. Our world class programs have educated four generations of men and women to lead in their communities, to innovate in their field, and to inspire with their lives. After LA has opened the door to the American dream for thousands of men and women with our big city sophistication and our hometown college field. Prepare yourself for a lifetime of learning. The future starts today. I'll say hello. 1455 remaining in the first half. Pass for LA with a 4 to 2 lead over Pass for Monterey Bay. There you go, and you don't do this. Or 206 Riders have yet to make a basket. They're only two points for our two free throws. As Beckman takes the wings into the front court, gets off to Bailey, he's going to win it. Now Beckman goes around the screen for months. In the lane, he blocks his shot. Nice defense there. Saw the lane, gets loose ball, looks to push it up. Gets up to win it. 
here, Ted's looking two defenders. That's when you get the ball back. That's what's pretty good to do that from the hair. Terry Griffin's getting back over by Lewis. Back to that, and we'll reset. 15 seconds from the shot clock. Now I'm going to leave the ball there. Now Griffin's with Harry. Looks like it was a hair. The head. Guys, they picked up the ball ball three. 18 foot and not close. An air ball. There's not much going right there off of the back of the way. That is a bit of a Oh, Lewis, hey, look at the sound of that. Look, look at that little Jenkins. Guys, why did they get the ball? Oh, he grabbed him. Yeah, Lewis couldn't get a handle on the ball. You can see that coming. Lewis had trouble handling the ball that entire possession. Oh, uh, Pedro comes back in for the Otters along with Faulkner. Lacey Gibbons comes back in for the Gold Eagles along with Samantha Hanson. The hair and the name Jenkins are going to left. So, Joel Jones taking a cue from Ray Hernandez and substituting for often to try to keep the players fresh. This certainly should be a world of good in this game, as underneath the foul is called. I believe it was Beckman impeding the process of, excuse me, progress of Kelly Lewis. So, number four, Andrew Bailey makes her first appearance for the Otters, 5 3 sophomore from Fontana. Well, Melville looking for someone good to finally get to the Lewis. Steps in the road to Samantha Hanson. Then one way to play one of themselves, back by Jefferson. So Jefferson was not fooled by that move by Samantha Hanson. Well, good one in front. Pedro can't find it. And it Jefferson finally. She's dead at three. Puts up a wild shot and somehow finds its way in. So Jefferson gets the first basket of the game for the Otters. Almost seven more through the hip one. Sandra Williams, for 53, she's right up and drives inside, lays up and in instead. Well, she got a lane to the basket, she took advantage of it. Her first two points of the game. But they didn't let the ball be on the roof with 17 points. Certainly led them to victory. Now, Fountain over the third goal in the corner for three and four to go through the bench, in and out. Up like that. They were even backing up. That way, the other ball's not open. Jefferson gets a third chance to see a slide. So the offensive rebound is going to the other way, really going. Here's Melville that's going to the foul. Second team foul. So Jefferson going to the rim and going to his tip. And that's what he goes off the heel, no good. Jefferson, the other is third leading scorer, and he only did about nine points a game. The others of the team are balanced scoring team. No player averages double figures for them. They spread their score in the way, that's what they did. Last year, also, the same thing. No audience player averaging double figures. That's a trademark for them. They had several players averaging usually between about seven and nine points a game. As the Southern Oaks has about a full court, six five gold leader. Now, Melville over to Lacey Gibbons. Gibbons right by Hilton. Gibbons backs in. Looks for Southern Oaks, he finally gives it to Lewis. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Lewis is going to the free and kicks off some other hands and goes up straight away for three. He looks like that one. Yeah, they sent it to I thought I'd be able to have a line, but I guess he had a throw on the line. As you see, that was a nice shot by Hanson for the first pass in the game. It's an eight to five. Now Bailey in the front court. Hanson Smith and Hanson picks it up. Now Bailey lobs it cross court. In front of it, he goes over to Fulger. Lewis picks it up. That board that kicks it back out to Bailey, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Now Bailey drives the lane, kicks it out, wide right open for Holcomb for round two, no good. Sandra Williams with the rebound, looking to push. The Otters get back on defense. Now Williams has a place to dribble, kicks off to Hampton. That was not the way, stolen by Fontenot. So there you go. I told you Fontenot was a defensive specialist, and she proved the point right there. Now there's three steals of Bailey. Now Pedro, I mean, he's shot. So a hand on the shot. Well, it's not a violation. So I thought Kobe the player got a hand on it, but they said that Kobe had just lost it and then regained it and traveled. Bunch comes back in for the Otters. The Otters have already used 10 players so far in this game. Kobe does it in the game. But Melville, that's all the way inside. Wow, it's sad. No good, but she will run a trip to the free throw line. Eyes on Andrew Bailey, their first foul. 
Let me go to the guys. So, thank God, bro. A sophomore, this is the first year to go to the state, New Mexico State last year. Of course, we can go to Australia. We've got the new buses at Green Lake. They did go to different high schools, and they were from the same hands. We had a college with the New South Wales Institute of Sport, which turns the lead athlete, so she's certainly a very good athlete. And she is coming off the bench now after starting the first several games in World Media. She makes both free throws, makes her 10 5 million. Now, Pedro pulls up the corner to three. That is short. Sandra Williams goes out for the rebound. Williams gets a quick left to Melville. It's not Melville. That was the baseline. Hits for a hit. He did get out and he got it before she could pass the ball. If he was undecided about whether to pass it to Lewis or Gibbons, and before she decided, she got it. Williams hit and turns out into the goal leader. Sandra Williams will get a left. So, Lewis is now on the floor and Jacobs will go to Eagles. Now, here's the matchup I was talking about. Lewis Jacobs on Fontenot. The Fontenot goes along and pulls up next to Basket and is fouled. That's a real mistake for William Jacobs. She swiped at the ball to try to steal it. And when she missed it, Fontenot just went right around her. Easily went up for a shot and was fouled by Samantha Hampton. So Fontenot trying to make the three point play. No longer five points a game. As I said, whatever she gives him offensively is gravy. She's going to go for a defense. That's going to go real good. But Munch gets the loose ball. Well, you can't have that happen off a missed free throw. Out of all points inside the Munch, he's double teamed. You know, the Hanson loop is in and knocks the ball away. Nice play. Here's the Gibbons. But quickly doing it the other way. And then she thinks better of it and slows things up. We'll see where the scoring comes from. It's the Sandra Williams doing the left here. Now, Lake the Gibbons. So, now the Hanson calling for the ball. Instead of going to Melville, Melville drives inside, kicks it underneath the Gibbons, and no shot. There was a foul on the pass. That may get the layup. So, Fabric gets called for her first foul, and that was a quick rest yes, for Sandra Williams. She's back in the game already. Boy, she wasn't even out a minute. Those are important three for your team. Morgan came in for the other. And Lewis. Pulls up for a wild three in the corner. She really didn't have to. The shot clock is almost four. And Bailey has it in the front court. Now yeah, Bailey stops the free throw line. Yeah, and three pointer. No good. That was by Daniel Padilla. And that's Sunday Williams. He hit the 10 minute mark for the first half. Brings in the front court. And he went wild pass. It was picked off by Morgan. Here's another little pitch it up, and she is fouled. So he'll bounce past that like Sandra Williams trying to get the ball to Samantha Hampton. Foul is on Mary Jenkins. Her first foul will take us to another media timeout. 952 remaining in the first half. Cascade all the way ahead. 10 to 7 on the Cascade Monterey Bay and the Cascade all the way ahead. Probably. Girls with curls, I don't know about you, but my hair is crazy. Finally, it's time to stop reading your curls. I have to tell you about my new best friend, Miss Jess. Since I've been holding a brush, I've been trying to tame white muscles. I love a run on her curl. And I've been using so many different products, so I get curls. Mix Chips has revolutionized curly hair. They are truly the only product designed for us. Whether you're black, white, Asian, Latin, Mediterranean, or any glorious combination of them all, Mix Chips is for you. Now all I need is Mix Chips and any soft, sexy, defined curls that aren't heavy or sticky. Mix Chips is 100% vegan, completely affordable, and a high base, tough, must have list. And the best news is now Mix Chips is available at Target. Soft, sexy, touchable curls are no Longer on the beach. You have mixed chips today. Remember the private store. Go to www.mixchips.net. 152 remaining. Finally, a 10 7 game. Well, we will struggling once again on offense, but I don't know if this is good Monterey Bay defense or if it's just bad offense. Because Monterey Bay, as I said, a very good defensive team. They're first in the conference in points allowed and first in defensive field goal percentage. They're also a very good rebounding team, second in rebounding margin. As going to the line now is Ashley Morgan. 
point that a five ten junior from Roman Park makes the free throw. That's Sonoma State country, but obviously she got away from Sonoma State. Uh, she's only been to the free throw line six times this year. That's the fifth make. Second free throw is also good. That makes a 10 to 9 game. Yeah, he's right back into this one. The Gold Eagles led by as many as five, 10 to 5. So the Adams has scored the last four points. Now in the head, he's got them. It looks like the Williams, fourth 18 foot, and no good. Well, it goes off the head of Morgan out of bounds, and it's still just in the head. So that's reset the lineup for the Gold Eagles. Alyssa Hanson, Cassandra Williams, and Sean Mahara, Lacey Gibbons, and Morgan Griffin's in there. The Adams have Cordial Jefferson, Morgan Burden, and Padilla in there. As Gibbons, pulls up for 16 foot on the elbow. No good. Alyssa Hanson gets the rebound, picks it up in his foul. So Alyssa Hanson's played bigger than his size so far. She has a black shot, and then she goes in among the trees to get a rebound there. So Morgan gets the foul. That's her first foul. Each team with 14 fouls. Alyssa Hanson goes to the line and makes the free throw. Alyssa Hanson back in the starting lineup after not starting yesterday. She did start the last two games of the Alaska Olympics tournament, and she was winning to the Alaska tournament team along with the Saga Williams. She had a very good tournament. Is that three throws? No good. Now Hanson gets it back. Where is it up there? And there's the layup. So it stays 11 to 9. As very well, quickly bringing in the front court. Now, Virgil, that's in the world of Jefferson. That's putting where they want to go. Jefferson, turn around six foot, and Rose hits the front rim and rolls in. So, Jefferson, first big point, ties the game at 11. The Adams have never led in this game. They have tied the Gold Eagles twice. And now, Williams gets over there and Jenkins. Jenkins kicks it in the air, and they're there. I'm Jefferson. Back to Jenkins, he fell back to three, and then back to the other. Kicks over to the head, tough pass. Now out to Mary Jenkins, she takes the three. Kicks back to the head, put 15 footers, not three. So Lisa Hanson tried to get the lead on, but she took it out of bounds. So Kelly Lewis comes back in for the Gold Eagles, and Mike Hitch is the parents number 30. There's a foul. 5 6 freshman from Anaheim comes in to give the Gold Eagles. I was a bit surprised yesterday. She does everything. Very well, especially rebounding. He didn't seem to get much time for Class Day LA yesterday. She only played four minutes in yesterday's game. She has a nose for the ball. She is a very intelligent player and does a lot of things really well. Now, Bailey. But it's stripped away on the head of this big pass, is it? Now, the other way, she'll slow it up. Oh, it's not going to go. They can't stand. Virgil gets the ball. Bailey knocked it away. Looks it up. Virgil gets it back. He got Padilla on the wing for three, and she knocks it down. Well, turn over leads the points up for the Adams, and they get their first lead of the game, 14 to 11. Well, but Alyssa Hanson gives away the ball. Now Lewis, looking for someone to give it to. He goes over to Williams instead. Williams is barely far off of her. Kicks in right over there. And there, Jefferson Hour, turn on eight footer off the heel, and bounces in. But I start for the Gold Eagles. And now we'll take those passes in the game. It's a 14 to 13. And Bailey will bring in the front court. He'll take seven minutes to go here in the first half. Now, Virgil, high, right on him. Just there to leave. Morgan, you know, leaping runner is good. With the right hand, that's her second basket. He's got his 16 to 13 lead. Now, Lewis. Looks to drive, pull up 10 footers, he knocks that down. Well, yeah, Kelly Lewis has struggled all year mightily shooting. They were finally breaking out of that slump. She was 4 7 shooting yesterday, including a couple of big threes. And she's got a couple of baskets in the early going to hit one. And they've got one point down. Now, Pojo. Lisa Hanson picks it up. But now, Pojo's wide open. It's still in. Three out to here. They're both there. Great Eagles had a miscommunication on defense. No one picked up Pojo. Oh, it's kind of really spinning, four footer. She goes down hard. But she'll run a trip to the free throw line. So Jefferson picks up her first foul. It's a 15 foul for the Adams. Andrew Williams going to the line. 
he's played almost every game in this game so far. It's just been the free throw. Free throw is no good. So it's all the way, and as I said, just had a streak end a couple games ago. Six good games, scoring 20 points or more. Of course, yesterday she scored only 17 points. She's an 83 and a half percent free throw shooter on the year, so that's a rare miss for her. And she gets the free throw on quite often. 73 attempts on the season. Second free throw is good. That makes ties the game up at 16. Williams Adams is only 19 points a game for the Gold Eagle. As on the front court, Hakeem looks over to Beckman, he just checked back in. Now it's back in the corner, Beckman wide open for the Gold Eagle. Bits banks it in! Yeah, Carla, can you believe that? There is no angle for a bank at all. She could not have done that on purpose. That was just had to be right there. The bank went from the corner, and that gets a foul. It's kind of inside the Williams. So you see one over front now. So front now making things happen again on defense for the Otters. And Lacey Gibbons will check back in for pass for the lane. Powell will sit down. The Otters bring the left trying to extend their three-point lead. It's just been a tight game the whole way through so far. We probably expected that with these two very good teams. All right, three point of high right? and she tried to do it again. Maybe so maybe she's doing that on purpose. And we're off the backboard and we're off the rim this time. That's an interesting strategy for three pointers. Trying to dunk them in from the side there. I'm not sure how much success she got doing that, but she made one a second ago. Now Lacey Gibbons with the ball gets over to the hair. And now the Williams do a tough pass and it's stolen. And it's still went to Williams. I heard the Williams come back far and could not. She went one and two. So it's kind of close things a little bit there. But still not happy with that. Jumping in the corner is good. Out Lewis and Joy James wants to time out. So six off things over with five ten and we'll take a quick break. Casting all is not standing, not only big twenty one to sixteen. On the Casting All of Thoughts Network. So yeah, after that handle has the benefit of my family's over eighty years of experience in the automotive industry. We can honestly say that there is no better time than now to purchase or leave the new and pre-owned vehicle of Sierra and Caravan Honda. We have a terrific inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles, but more importantly, we have an experienced and knowledgeable club to guide you with the luxury treatment you should expect as an offer of customer. With the value you deserve at Sierra and Caravan Honda, with any plus years of experience behind us, we know how. Girls with cars, I don't know about you, but mental health is crazy. Finally, it's time to stop the That's a good thing. No good. And Samantha, that's when she was down. 450 million during the first half, so Samantha has to... We need to put those before the shot, so it'll be a bad of bounds. That takes us to a media timeout, so 450 and 80 in the first half. Costco Valley Bay is leading Costco Valley 21 to 16 on the Costco Valley Athletic Network. Welcome to the Pepsi Leaf Fest Project. This year we're giving millions to fun ideas that will refresh the world. Your ideas, voted on by the public. Here's how it works. Submit your idea at requestedidue.com for a short period of the request period. Ideas can be submitted in six different ways. Health and fitness, health and culture, neighborhood, the planet, education, food and shelter. Hope for ideas you care about at requestedidue.com and help them become a reality. Anyone can vote for up to 10 ideas each day. They promote good ideas using the Facebook and Twitter tools. I do you the most vocal to the Pepsi Recess Dance and make them happy. So for the photo, you will make the world a better place. With your help, it will. What do you think? Join the Pepsi Recess Project. Thousands of ideas, millions of words. Every Pepsi Recess is the world. Well, 50 and 80 in the first half. This is a record, the big stretch for Costco and Oregon. Yesterday began a stretch where they played eight of their ten games here at the Eagles left. The only time they're on the road is next weekend. They played Sonoma State and San Francisco State. 
some of the first home home field after that. So this is certainly a stretch that they can really dig up wins. Here in the home field is Tommy Williams. Who knows the ball? Just through the hands of Pete Tyson for the 22. Thank you, Hickers, for coming up for the game. So for the game, he goes Margaret Tyson, Tommy Williams, Lacey Gibbons, and Smith, and Hickson in there. Well, picked in the corner, played to a high up and three pointer, no good. Goes off the top of the board, up and over and out. So he's going to keep back in the way. Of course, for the others, Hedges in there along with Bailey, Munch, Holcomb, and Fontenot. As Tiger Williams is slowly going in front court, looking to claim his five point deficit. That's the one that led for most of the first half. But the others have gone on a run and have built this lead. Williams falls down, gives it off to Blue Parsons over to Smith and Hanson. Smith and Hanson wins the big ones. Put it on six foot, he's no good. Nigel will go for the rebounds. Looks up for Lacey Gibbons, wide open for three straight away. That's a shot, but it didn't come close. Nigel gets loose fast, but Dave Eagles get a third chance. Now Parsons goes over to Smith and Hanson. Back to Nigel, Dave Eagles will lose back. Back to the back goes Nigel. Sandra Williams has the ball to three point line. Here's the way in, running from pretty no good. Holcomb gets the rebound, so Williams is certainly struggling to get shots away in the first half. Reminiscent of yesterday. Now, pull up 15 foot no good. Margo fighting for the rebound. Goes out of bounds, and we'll play with the others. Aaron Jenkins comes back in for both Eagles. Into the first appearance of the 15 or so back. Now they've seen it from Tyson. She saw brief time yesterday. But Jamal Jones obviously unhappy with the rebounding so far as Barrett is a rebounding specialist. That's what she does. The others and a whole host of subs come back in for them, including more than in Bigger Jefferson. Along with Padilla. Now Fonda will rebound the ball. They're doing high. The ball game got Bailey will reach back. They're going to get the on top of her. Now, a little swing by Jefferson goes into the lane. Now, an open under shot, no good deep belt with no deep ones there. She picks and brings it the other way to Melville. Melville will slow things down and reach back. So, once again, if the Sandra Williams on the bench, he turned it in and out by Melville, tough break. We'll see who generates the offense in the whole big As there's not much offense in the period here, is a reaching foul there by Melville, clearly foul. That's only a six, six team foul round. That's a first second foul in Melville. Devin Rizabas makes her first appearance. Six one junior from Santa Maria. He started yesterday's game. Rizabas played only 10 minutes and did not score yesterday. That's fine, man. No guy back. Kicks it out. Three pointer in the corner by Padilla. No good. Devin boxes that nicely. And Big Melville gets the weak rebound. Melville, three out his back to step to Gibbons. Gibbons drives inside. Wow, what the hell is that good? But a traveling violation. Well, I thought maybe that was a good move, but they say she took too many steps. That's another turnover for the Gold Eagle. Addie's right now on a 5 0 run. Gold Eagle did not score a point in over four minutes. As Bailey. Has the ball. Gives back to Padilla, now back to Bailey. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Bailey around the screen. Guys in the lane, kicks in the corner. And Morgan, 16 foot on the baseline, no good. Morgan gets another rebound. He will slow things down and bring it in the front court. He takes two minutes to play here in the first half. Now Morgan takes the pass, drives inside the stand. Goes past the loser pass, he blows the arena. But she gets the loose ball somehow. Looking over to Melville. Oh, he throws it right to Morgan. She was looking for Lacey Gibbons before Morgan was right in the way. And she threw that pass right to her as if she was her teammate. Now well, Bailey has him in the front court. So Kellogg is really piling up for the Gold Eagles. They have 15 in the first half. The only of the men's game yesterday where they piled up a ton of turnovers in the first half. Now Bailey, hesitation dribble, and the lead. Well, back to Ray Bird. Bad shot, Ray Bird, out of contact. They let it go. Marvel quickly comes the other way, kicks off to Gibbons, one on one. But he's a real point five foot off the hill, Ray Bird. Gibbons fights for the rebound. Goes off to Jefferson. 
And it turned out it's all by Renee Jimenez. So she was not out to play. She's favorite to test today, but they got that many baskets. So we'll take a quick break. One and two in the morning. Back to the lake. Still trails by five. We're going to be one of the best eight members of Prison. Many choices. Try to serve on any Cotton House in Gray Road and Confession. Save your secular Gray Road Club. It's just a thing with Malibu Prison. All of my quarters will sleep here for a limited time. Stand with this morning and night. There's no statements. Don't try to follow down. Stand by you. Stand with this morning and night. Many of those might be disabled and sick. One in two in the morning in this first half. Both teams have all kinds of trouble shooting, but they have even two of the things. They're basically 25% from the field right now. Yeah, I don't know. Two of the other for three point lines, so they get to take any of their three pointers to drop and work out. And now in the game, it's number 10 with the ball. That's Rebecca Griffin. She banks her right in. So she comes out in the game and gets her first basket. Robbie's got a deep rotation here in the first half. They need 11 players here in the first half. As the ball tumbled away from Alyssa Belt, she gets it back. That picks up a Lewis. And a Lewis traveled, boy. Obvious as day there. She did, did not know which place she wanted to go. So the ball dude was just getting nowhere on offense. 13 first half fails. Is that certainly a big story in this one? I mean, the Addies have a great defense, but some of these turnovers are unforced turnovers. This is not the Addies defense, first of all, these turnovers. She can get set by Renee, gets it back from Fountain. So she got one from Fountain there, but she couldn't go in. She backs it out. The shot clock is off, so the goal is cool, so it's a lost shot instead. Back there, and Lewis, who blows the rail up. Ball goes out of bounds. All of them to the Addies. So, boy, Costco the Addies going to build several layups here in the first half. They could be a head right now with all the lips they've missed. A lot of them uncontested. As the Otters bring the ball to front court, they're going to have to concentrate more on layup drills here before the second half begins. That's Griffin. I don't need. So he dropped it by Bill Lusabas. Nice help defense there with 2.3 seconds remaining. So the Otters are going to have to catch some shoot here. He's going in down on the baseline by Fountain. Looking for going to go to, it in and out of bounds as the clock ran a bit more. We'll see if they need credit. I believe they will. There's 1.2 seconds, but there should be more time than that. Don't think they will inbound it in front of their own bench. They feel much time to put on the clock. And as Coach Jones signaled the players to go into the front court. That's the only way they're going to get a shot off here is to throw the ball into the front court. It's reset to two seconds. So, Costco will have two seconds to get a shot off and no inbounded. Well, they're inbounded. I don't need to go past basket, so they got to go the whole 94 feet. Get the hands and make a throw a baseball pass here. Still goes in the middle of Jenkins. Jenkins, not enough time. Gets it off. She might have been fouled, but it was after the buzzer, so it doesn't matter. And that'll take us to halftime. Boy, what first half offensively for Costco to win? 14 turnovers and only 6 to 25 shooting. They just could not get any baskets. They did not score a point after the 622 mark in the first half. Costco and Monterey Bay scored the last seven points in the first half, and that's why they're ahead 23 16. And if you can go to can turn it on again in the second half, just like they did yesterday. It's going to be a lot tougher task to get this Monterey Bay team. I'll tell you why when I come back. Costco and is playing. Costco and Monterey Bay 23 16 at halftime. I'll be back in a few minutes with first half stats. And the beginning of the second half here on the Costco Valley Athletic Network. The balance is how we distinguish ourselves from the other two divisions, presidents and chancellors, from division two institutions, and talking about what the problem is with division two. Out of the initial summit emerged a consensus 
our basic goals of how we want our students to develop and mature and the kinds of experiences we think are valuable for them will really reflect in and what the strategic position is going to be for the vision for the employers. If we know that I'm going to do this is my third team team in Division 2, and our platform has been one of the best seminars I've ever had in Division 2. We've become really involved. I see it in our student effort. We have really put quite a bit of effort in our new college that we have been able to do. We talk about our student effort experience with Division 2, and I think we really the administration of programs have been through jobs saying they will be balanced. You can have your three hours a day, but after that, they are mine and they will be back for the money. We have to make sure that every student athlete who has a broad experience in terms of academic opportunity, career opportunity, moving to the community, understanding who they are, growing up, and being good competitors as well. I don't want our student athletes to be involved in student government. I don't want to see the record to participate in the music programs that we have here, in the theater programs, and the student organization that the students in the theater have. That to me is life and life. So it's not just academic music. Many of our student athletes are leaders on campus. Uh, they take the initiative for community engagement projects. We've all been with the show that most of the women are in our face outside of the classroom. We have to show for that as well. We have to show for responsibility as well. One of the great things about the Division 2 is that you're not going to be the last one. You're right there. You're not going to be in the other great seat. But conversely, you hear a lot more and you see a lot more. So we have a responsibility for our fans uh, not only to put on a good product on the floor, but for as long as a mom and dad feel good about it, there's a kind of bother with them. And it is a bad program. Of academics, athletics, and community outreach. Twenty-five percent of our student athletes receive no athletic aid at all. The country scholars that matter are feeling as a lot more fees to participate in athletics and scholarship athletes. For the first of the students, we partially monthly we pay for the scholarship. We have students who do not have the opportunity to go to college to do that. Uh, through the division two, it's student first and student success first. Uh, I'm always reminded that my friend used to say that we are an educational corporation, not a conscious interest. And I think we really took that to higher division two. I believe that we have the opportunity to create in division two a vision that the Middle Commission has been talking about for a long time about the appropriate role in the K 12 place. Many of our guys give students the flexibility to make choices. This is far from a slow fire and a lot of money, but I really think it is a class of all our campuses. The idea is that every student athlete should have as full as possible life experience while an undergraduate class with the career. The president of the University of Indiana, West President, West Texas A&M University, Mark Tellers, it is important, and I'm going to be clear with the details of this meeting.
It is left by Lake Eagles basketball. Pastor Mario Bell is leading Pastor Bell 23 to 16. Quickly to the halftime stats. As I said, Mario Bell is a balanced team. They have Mullins still more than five points in the first half. Dickie Jefferson led the way with five. Ashley Morgan had four points. Double plays had three points. They had Padilla and Nikki Beckman. And they had a host of players with two points. Jessica Fountain, Peyton Lewis, Rebecca Griffin, and Gabby Bunch all had two points. So many of their players who got in the game got into the scoring column. Four times in a row, they were led in scoring. By Kelly Lewis, he had four points. There wasn't much scoring for the Gold Eagles, but they spanned around also. Saw the wins only had three points on one of five shooting. He struggled to get a goal in the first half. Lacey Gibbons had two points as did Samantha Hampton. Dave Melville had two points. And Alyssa Hanson had one point. Michelle Monroe also had two points. But the shooting was not pretty when you look at the team stats. The Golden Eagles only shot 24%, 6-25. That's what Monroe Bay wasn't much better. They were 8-40. Monroe Bay was only 2-11 for three-point wins. The Golden Eagles were all four. Both teams didn't seem to make their free throws. Golden Eagles scored six. Monroe Bay five or seven. Rebounds were not even. 22-21 in favor of the Golden Eagles. Big story there was turnovers. Foster Bay had 14 turnovers in the first half. Monterey Bay did finally end up with 10 turnovers, but that really hurt the Gold Eagles. Matt and Miss Lillips in the first half really hurt them. Foster Monterey Bay is very dangerous when they're headed off now. This is a team you do not want to try to make a second half comeback against. I don't have the exact number in front of me, but I believe they've something somewhere around 60 and 1 the last couple of years when they've won at halftime. So they do not blow second half leads. They've only lost one second half lead to Humboldt State last year. The last couple of years, so the Gold Eagles really trying to do something special here in the second half before they come back. Maybe after tonight, the Gold Eagles are on the road next weekend. All this broadcast will be January 18th when they come back to the Eagles just to play six game home stand against Chico State. They play Chico State's finish loss that weekend. Of course, that's part of the stretch of eight home games in the next 10. But that's what I love it. Got off to a good one row start. Let's see what they can do in the second half tonight. And that is inbound the ball around the way. Boys are out there. That is. Look like they have the same five that started the game with one exception. Bailey is starting the second half for them. As well, in the corner, here comes double team by Lacey Gibbons and Samantha Hanson. Gold Eagles have the same five that started the game for them. The second half, that's Virgil. They took the time to pass. Gold Eagles are clearly picked up the defensive intensity. Bailey, three pointers defected by Samantha Hanson. Nice defense there. Cover in, stick to coming ahead and shares it off to Lacey Gibbons. Gibbons gets it over to Alyssa Hanson, and the Gold Eagles will reach back. Now, Kelly Lewis. Oh, the William. And a foul is called inside. I believe it's a holding foul against Bailey. And it is her second foul. So a 15 foul on the others. The referees call the second half differently than they call the first half. They had a lot going in the first half. See if they tighten up the whistles here. Paul Lewis gets over to Gibbon. Look at the Sandra Williams. You figured Sandra Williams would be a lot more aggressive in the second half. It's hard to be a little. Going around the screen, the other way, three defenders on it. She puts up a shot, no good. Smith, and it's a play for the rebound. Goes off to Padilla instead. Excuse me, I hope him. Now Bailey took it off, and the Otters just slow things down. If the Otters want to play a slow pace, they do not want to play up and down. To get their defensive nature is up to the Otters. Shot is up and good by Pedro. I don't know how she got that shot to go in. The first pass in the beginning. Give the Otters their biggest lead of the game, 25 to 16. That happened. That little Lewis, she couldn't handle it. Great idea. The execution of the pass just wasn't there. And another turnover for Cal State LA. As Bailey was slowly bringing in the front court. Now, Roger gets over the hook while swinging with Batman. Batman was a big defensive factor in that first half. He was an answer at the Hampton. Hampton went over to Jefferson. Got it by Lacey Gibbons. Finally had a balance. Goes about Sandra Williams. Cuts off the pass. Nice play there. Put the boot down and he is fouled by Holcomb. So nice play by Sandra Williams to drop to the level of the pass and pick it off. Dave Melville will come in from the Gold Eagles making an early appearance. So Lisa Hanson will sit down. So Dave Melville is able to create some offense in the first half. That's why Janelle Jones is going through it early here in the second half. And Lacey Gibbons gets over with Sandra Williams at the elbow. Look at the post-up, she doesn't do that too often. 
Then the fact that that snake hurts a nice boy. I want that sadly violation and hurts a big way up that big boy. Well, that's what we got underneath the basket. It didn't look like you knew what you wanted to do. And if you took steps, the first thing I think it was Finley. Well, the Bird Eagles, not staying up well in the second half. They're picking up right where they left off turnover wide. Both of them open in the corner for three. No good. Fatnick gets in there to get the rebound. He's weak going in. Now, Bailey, second one is right on. He gets off to Hoka. Hoka drives on Bibbs. The Lions are up the hill. He gets up. There's the layup. The Lions miss a layup for once. Had Sunday Williams the other way. Takes the three, kicks it over to Gibbons. Gibbons has not been able to find an open three points like that. An open point quite far in the lane off the heel, no good. Tony Ruth is wide open in the corner, it's even cooler. Now Cordial gets the ball on the pass and open. Looks like a wide open foul net, open 16 foot as she wants it down. You know Jones is not happy, she wants a quick time out. But when she wants to remain in the second half, the Golden Eagles are not any better off than they were in halftime, they're worse off. Down by 11, and they crossed it all ahead, don't they? California State University, Circle the Globe, and Life the Dark, the California State University system has been providing promising engineers for the past five decades. Cal State LA graduate, Jose Lodi, is the founder and president of Red Promise, a leading public meeting by way of public. If you work hard, have proper education, you might be doing that spirit available that way. The California State University System has been working for California for 50 years. So I have to have a has the benefit of my family with over 80 years of experience in the automotive industry. We can honestly say that there is no better time than now to purchase or lease a new or pre-owned vehicle with Sierra and Ford on hand. We have a terrific inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles. But more importantly, we have experienced and knowledgeable staff to guide you with the luxury treatment that you should expect as an outdoor customer. Get the value you deserve at Sierra Outdoor by the end of the day. Any you can experience behind us, you know what I mean. Both people are down by 11. The Otters have scored the first four points in the second half. Costco is still looking for their first basket. No team percentage is just going down. They missed their first two shots in the second half. It's 6 to 27 so far. They're looking for anyone to get them offense. And Dean Parsons is back in the game. So it's now Jones searching for anyone who can get them offense. Now Melba with the ball. Get the little Lacey Gibbons. Oh, and Jacob Bartlett's up there. Gibbons, oh, there he is. He's looking in. So the Gold Eagles finally make a layup. Second basket for Gibbons makes it 27 18. Now Fountain, double team. Gets anything. Dean Parsons steals the ball. As the leg gets up to Sandra Williams, Red Eagles on the run. Williams, now he kicks out to Gibbons. Pull up high at the 18 foot, and no good. Pull up high, he's for the rebound. She's called out, couldn't get it. Found it, took the other way, pulled past the stadium. Now Gibbons, the Red Eagles, wants the team to win. Gibbons hits the ball in the front court. Throws the ball off to Mary Duncan. Duncan, Duncan can come on to get it to. Pass on the dribble. Gives back to Sandra Williams. Williams back to Gibbons. Turning time on the shot clock. Now Belgo over to Jenkins. Oh, he was leaving the back basket, but there was miscommunication there. Parsons and Belgo were both in the same spot. Neither one of them knew who was supposed to get the pass, but I thought it was a travel there at the deal. He kind of went through a running stop, and the refs didn't hold it, didn't, didn't see it. And I found that. Runs into Belgo. He's going to call the foul on Belgo, though. She didn't really stick it on We'll see if they're going to fall out of bounds. There's Kaysa Powell makes an early appearance here in the second half. Gibbons will sit down. Like I said, Janelle Jones searching for any kind of combination that brings life to this whole new team. As Monk, it was inside. Offensive foul is called a hit. So I did. They caught Monk with the hit. Or with the baskets. That's their first foul. But 18 fouls early on the ladders. That's about the only big spot right now. Gold Eagles look at the corner with nine point deficit. Now Melville, diving inside. Oh, shoots a 15 footer and makes it. Then you're like she wanted the shot. She took it as a second result and made it. Usually you don't make that shot when you don't take it right away. 
and she walked it down for a second basket and make a 27 to 20. Now dumping it inside. Jackson loses the ball, triple team, Kyle gets it. Williams pushing it up there. Quickly over to Marion Jenkins. Head pass, but she got it. Whips across court to B. Parsons. Parsons drives in five. Moves off the foul. Foul is tied up. Oh, boy. The ball does stay with Foster by L. And it's Cordo checks back in for the Otters. And I believe timeout is called. 13.53 remaining. We'll take a quick break. Foster by L is cut the gift with the seven boy. <laughs> I believe in faith. I say it right. And by his business yesterday. That's the only person I can do. I say it right. I I say it I Maybe it's where they're located in the heart of Los Angeles. Maybe it's the power of 30,000 years a year to know about our world class program, our world in the faculty, and our dedicated staff. Maybe it's the promise that our world is a world of wisdom, education, science, media, and humanity. Maybe you can find out why. At the beginning of the lifetime of the world, the past of the world. 1453 and maybe we go over there showing a little bit of life here in the last minute. Sandra Williams ran down the bed in the baseline with 17 seconds on the shot clock. Aaron Jenkins goes to Paul, pays right there, and Blue Carson, the athletic connection, the offer for the Gold Eagle. Now Paul gets the ball into Melville. Paul is a pretty much thing in his own defense. The entire game is up there, not the little bad pass. Carson's getting handle it. Going out to Beckman, he's back there. After a while, it's a three pointer for Padilla. She can't make it. Williams fights for the rebound and gets it. Puts the ball the other way. Williams, pull up 16 foot and knocks it down. Nice pull by Sandra Williams. Getting some quick offense. That's something the Gold Eagles are fairly locked in this game. That is usually a button back on defense, and the Gold Eagles have tried to be in transition. But you can't come to 22. It's the closest cost of all his bench since the first half. Now Beckman. Right by Marion Jenkins. Oh, yeah, Jenkins by Jenkins. Yeah, boy, she finished out of that one. Over to the Monterey Bay shooting section. Yeah, she was not going to let Beckman get by. Now, Quaid's going to run down the ball. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Jenkins is coming to get it to. Quick roll by Williams out of bounds. So the Gold Eagles really active on defense for the last couple of minutes. The deflections and steals have really picked up. They don't usually translate from the transition offense, and that's what Cassidy is going to need right now. As Munch gets off to Beckman. Beckman got it by Nolan Jenkins, and she knocks it around, steals it. Look at the coach, Nolan Jenkins, 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 Nolan as Coach Jimenez is not happy, a whole host of subs are getting ready to check in for the Otters. They're going to have a new team out there in a minute. Now they're looking to cut this to a three-point game. How much time to fake though? So Mago with their fifth point of the game. Red Cross can only play as more than five points. Going to Sandra Williams, actually the leading scorers in the game, believe it or not. And she makes the second free throw. She's winning at the free throw line. She's 18 for 20 this year. That's 90%. And it's a 27 to 24. So the Gold Eagles are going to win themselves. They still got six points. Not barely. What's over to Holcomb? That's Jefferson. He's going out of eight lanes. Now Holcomb, guided by Tyson, throws up the three. No good. Power, thanks for the rebound. Sandra Williams coming up. Looking to cut this thing to one. He'll tie it. Tyson takes the three. Guys inside here, 10 foot off the rim, no good. And Melville runs into Bailey. And Bowser and Bailey went down hard. She looks like she's shaking up down on the court. Trying to go through the basket, I hope she's okay. Third foul on Melville. Not yet in major foul trouble, but we'll see if Terrell Jones leaves her in. As Coach Mendes is going to check on Bailey, and he's going to go to the bench. 
form, she she's all right. She worked out hard. She had a brand new outfit that was on her leg. I don't know. So the Golden Eagles making a comeback here. They were down 27 18 with 1642 left in the half. In the last 30 minutes, they really cut into it. And you can thank their defense with a couple of key turnovers. As Bailey's hopped up and she's going out the floor around Powell. That's a good sign. And it she's okay. Laddie's now up to 16 turnovers, so the team's almost even in turnovers. The Gold Eagles have turned the tide here in the second half as far as forcing turnovers. So the Laddie's will get the ball to pull South back in 13 29 remaining, up by three. So Griffin comes back into the game for Bailey. Now I'll start with the Gold Eagles just making a good appearance in number three. Now the Michael is a hard battle because that's the same ladders. So the Michael made a cameo appearance in yesterday's game. He only played a couple of minutes, but she's been there earlier in this game. She, has, she maybe could knock down an outside shot. She's certainly somebody who could knock down the free ball. And that guy's throwing in boy, yeah, they're hoping he's not going to get it. And that point though. Looks like the Griffin and the Addies will reset. Now Jefferson gets out the closer. Liam Jenkins is right on her. Looks on the back. Now to Holcomb. He's going on the wing. Runs out. Good, good. Jefferson gets the lead on her. Jenkins ties it up. And that should be a hard ball. And we'll go through the great Eagles on the possession line. So across the way again, Liam Jenkins facing a little bit turnover. But he has certainly been valuable to pass the ball on defense for the entire time here. And Gordon Eagles really missed her when she's out by injury, especially when the pass to Mendes Hill's game. They just could not force any turnovers, and I believe a big portion of that was not having Mary Jenkins in the lineup. And if you find William, look back to DeMarco. Now Powell has it, so a bit of a different lineup here. This is one we haven't seen too much this year. Harrison throws up the three and finds Gordon Eagles bench. Well, then DeMarco has to the rebound. Picks up a California good. Heidi first touch to Sandra Williams and she's five. So no second. So all the new stars that Molly Burns getting in the first half, the Gold Eagles are getting now. The new star foul is on Jefferson. So that's only her second foul. That's a 15 foul on the ladders. So they're quickly running out of fouls. As Williams looks to inbound, he gets in the foul. Foul. Keep going. She ain't taking that shot. The marker takes a 17 footer instead. Well, Paul, I don't think you realize how close she was. She could have put up for about a five footer right there and she didn't even look at it. Now, Pedro in the front court passes up a shot. And Griffin travels. So, Pedro, I thought he sat there. She had a wide open three pointer. Didn't want to take it. That's another obvious thing over as Beckman comes back in for them. So, the turnovers are about even now. The Gold Eagles are 18. Mario Bay is up to 18 also, so they're dead even in turnovers. As to Sandra Williams, brings in the front court. Remember, the Gold Eagles are 13 years so old. It's like, oh, she lays up and blows the ring up. Yeah, the guy that plays to blow the ring up, you would expect the Sandra Williams to be the last player to do that. Now, I'd love to play the lead. Yeah, it's shot real good. Going over the back of Williams, but they're going to bat the ladders. Well, Williams looked like she had a back start. But she's shorter than Jefferson. I thought they might at least give the ball to pass through the way, but they did not. They play really in touch the last. So the ball will be inbounded right away from Mario Bay Basket in the full shot clock. Bird will inbound it. Bird goes up for Mertz, almost out of bounds. She gets it. Now double two looks like a foul mark. Now we're going here. Bird will only need pitch it up and pitch it in. The help is right there, so. That is still the first basket in a long time. It's a 21 24. That Griffin, there you go, looks like the Bisons. Up and over, scoop shot, no good. Yeah, it's shot. You couldn't get a long rebound. Quickly, the other way. Griffin. Bisons, so she didn't save it. Probably better she didn't. They said, never to save it, only go to the basket. Morgan comes in for the ladders. Melville didn't really pick up the basket at all. Powell will sit down. So DeMarco, Williams, Graham Jenkins, Tyson's, and Melville are out there for a pass for the way. 
Jump the ball. 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 Jump the The only things left is we're close to another minute mark. Now, when you can play the screen, Williams decides to keep it outside in the perimeter. Now, Margo, looking inside, can't find anyone. That's in the club. Not good again, and Williams might be able to go to the line. So, Margo's going to create some offense here. And if we go back to the free throw line, she's made all four of the free throws. As I said, she was almost automatic at the free throw line. I don't want to jinx it, but she's made eight for a total on the year. I think she made two more to pull this game back to within three points. Well, this has been a defensive struggle, as you might have expected. That's what showed you really expected the second half to be this much of a struggle scoring wise. Most of the game, the first half was just a miserable offensive display by both teams, but in the second half, both teams picked it up offensively, especially the way they were. And she missed the free throw, sure enough. She mentioned the free throw, she misses it, and Zinx, I guess. Hickman comes back in for the auto. So Melville will play a savage run here. But this second half has seemed to have been just as much of an offensive struggle as the first half was. And it's 29 to 25, 11 minutes to go. Bob Beckman. Just one of the fountain that played by Williams. Bob Melville picks it up, and Melville sets it too hard and fires it. So that's the first foul on Melville. So she's going to have to take a seat. So Melville may be out for quite a while as Kelly Lewis comes back in. We'll see how long Snow Jones can keep Melville out of the game. She's really helped start this comeback as going by the phone net. I mean, he picks it up. Good play by Lewis to reach in there and hit the shot. Dickens picks it the other way. Look at the push. Find a lane. Back to the Lewis, picks it up, shot is blocked, and a foul is called. On top of she did not like that call at all. But it's still a foul, but it's too free for us to call the Lewis. She looked like she's shaking up on the play, she went down pretty hard. Second foul on Fightmore. So that's already the eighth team foul on the Otters. And Lewis will go to the line to shoot three. Lewis knocks down the first free throw. Bailey comes back into the lottery. That's a good sign. She's walking a little gingerly, but it's a good sign that she can come back into the game. She obviously wasn't hurt that badly on that play earlier. Lewis makes the second free throw, so two big free throws there. Lewis, of course, over an 80% free throw shooter. Or a little bit many excellent free throw shooters. And it's a 21 27. She's the closest to both of them has been in a long time. Oh, that was stolen. Lewis goes in, don't do that the way. And the offensive foul is called. Lewis drew the charge. And it's called there. And that's a key foul, too. Because that's the 19 foul, so it won't be free throws this time. That means every foul from now on, lost 10 21 of the game, called against Monterey Bay, will be two free throws to pass through the wall. That could be big down the stretch if the goal leaders can get to the free throw line. And Father Williams looked off to Lewis in the front court. Three Parsons coming for the ball and gets it. Now Parsons takes the shot, gives it up to DeMarco. Off to Williams. Williams looking for a lane. Back to Lewis, along the Parsons screen, kicks it up to Lewis. Lewis with seven on the shot clock, ready to go. Now with three seconds after DeMarco. Back with one second. And it's 17 foot off the front end. They're good. Lewis fighting for the rebound. Bounds on the floor. DeMarco gets it. And it's a three game. She does get the ball now. He pulled it out. Looked like they were in his possession, but they did it back and got a time out. They'll get the ball and we come back. Game 36 and winning. Don't go anywhere, bro. This is an exciting one now. 21 27 by the door on the Fast and Wild Athletics Network. More than the 400,000 NCAA student 
just a lot of the things that I said, and some of the other And 46 and 8 in the second half, passed it away. And again, 29 to 27. Well, we did it. Certainly going a big run after being down 11 points earlier in this half. The 17 minute mark, since then, they've gone on 11 to 3 women over an extended period. As they are looking at how the ball finally gets into Parsons. Parsons, oh, he's too bothered. He threw back for a shot, and a second long ago defender came to him. He decided to hesitate, and that passed us. That'll take us to the media timeout now. 943 remaining. And we'll check it out. Don't go anywhere. 3947. Pass to Monterey Bay. Yes. What are you guys doing? We're trying to decide if Diggs beats Isaac or Stag. Well, there's only one double double left by Lance, and I saw it. It's in the rule Three points on the year. She makes the second free throw. 
Don't think you always got to leave. Go to the other side of the road and Barry will take a seat. As Williams are going to grab the front foot, they're 40 and over. Don't think you can go to the Eagles now. Paul Lewis gets up to the back row. Over to Parsons. Parsons looking to drive. Picks it up and goes off the hand of the back row out of bounds. Miscommunication. The pass went one way and the back row is going the other way. Goes off the hand. So Lacey Gibbons makes a return for the pass in the race. She's not going to be able to play a long time. Well, Jones obviously not happy with her play. He has played 19 minutes. He scored four points. But he's not made a three pointer in the game. Well, Fogel. Well, now, Bob Parsons comes out to the defender. Fogel looks at the side of the He goes out to Beckman. Now, well, Jenkins comes out on her. He's right underneath. And I'll put the ball to the side. He's saying he didn't get that ball out of the field. So that was on Fadmont. Fadmont raising his hands up for a grand move. That's a third foul. So a great goal for the Gold Eagles is the Otters look like they're going to have an uncontested basket by Munch. So instead of going the other way. So Pascal will come up with yet another chance to try and tie this one up. Here comes the 8 minute mark. Here if you want it. He can't play back there. They cast it away. Williams thinks about the three, gives it to Parsons. Parsons over to Gibbons. Lewis, wide open for three and four to go. Look at the game on him. The three years, that's the first game of the game. That's a nice three. And cast it away. He's in the lane, 32 to 31. That first lead since the first half. That third goal is the third goal after the defense now. Jenkins is on here. She has a baseline. She's got a team. Well, almost got there. Parsons comes out on her. Whips it over to Reagan. Now Beckman. Going around the screen by Munch. Well, yeah, almost got there. The Parsons out to Kirkland. Well, right open for three. Ooh, not real good. Jenkins with the rebound. Takes it right ahead to Parsons. Right on two. Parsons. And he puts it up and puts it on. So he Parsons right on two. Takes it in. Takes that. Stays for the third round. This is the first time in the game the Gold Eagles have really controlled tempo. As Burton has it on the front court. Number two, he has nowhere to go. And the offensive player is going to the library violation. And then Hernandez is really unhappy about that guy. They say she used that library to try to create space. That was on Burton, that's her third foul. So Williams hits up the rebound the back. Five minutes coming out for the Otters. They didn't help him back then. Interesting lineup for the Otters out there. As they have Morgan and Bates, two Bates players in there right now. And Lewis, looking over to Jenkins. There's up for a long three pointer. Oh, good, that's not his game. And then Parsons is fouled on the rebound by Bates. So the referees are really clapping down with the whistles here. Big foul on Munch. So the fouls are big enough for the Otters. They have three, four players who have three fouls now. Three Parsons going to the line. Parsons with two points on one of three shooting and 13 minutes to play in this game. First Parsons bounces and bounces in. Fortunate bounce there. Bailey and Jefferson come back in for the Otters. Parsons on page Nigel from Togo, Australia. Parsons looking to give the Gold Eagles an extended lead, looking to give them a five point lead. Williams are out of that, tough right there. And Bailey will bring it up and the end is sitting off the ball. So Pascal has really picked it up on the defense again here. So that's the offense. And Bailey fumbles the ball, stayed by Williams. Guys, it's up, Williams over Parsons and a foul. Well, I think that was the case of Parsons being a lot bigger than Bailey. She looked like she was set, but Parsons stayed on her feet and Bailey went down. I believe that's what influenced the official call. Fifth call on Parsons. Parsons looked like she was set there in the lane, just waiting for Bailey to come to her. 
And what happens a lot of times with officials, if they don't see the defender go down, they usually won't call the foul on the defender. They'll call a blocking foul. Usually when the defender goes down after contact, when they call a charge. And Bailey goes around the foul, cut him against a one and one, and she makes a first free throw. So Bailey getting him into the line. The line is 8 for 10 from the free throw line of the game. Bailey's made all three of the free throws. Well, I think it's 10 or 14 from the line. Second free throw rolls around and falls down. Beckman comes back in for the Otters. Bailey will sit down. So maybe offense and defense slips. And Sandra Williams will bring it over to the court. 35 to 33, pass it away. Trying to hang on to this lead. Now give it to Jordan Lewis. Lewis looking for someone to give it to. Finally gives it to Williams. Williams looking for Jordan. Something like a pass. Picks out the Gibbons. Gibbons over to Jenkins. Jenkins. He's got the Williams right up in the corner for three. He's got the Williams right up in the corner for three. He's got the Williams right up in the corner for three. He's got the Williams right up in the corner for three. That's the biggest lead the Gordon Eagles have here in the second half. Now, the front break. Morgan goes inside. Wild shot, but she's fouled. Both Gibbons and three Parsons were there to defend her. They give the foul to. They give it to Gibbons. So Munch comes back in for the Otters. Jefferson and Beckman will sit down. Bailey also comes back in. So Morgan with two shots here, looking to cut into this five point cost of their lead. She makes the first free throw, and it actually was a one and one. So this match, this good match, the biggest thing you do for Pasco Delay before that late free throw. The Otters are going by, of course, as many as 11 points earlier in the second half. Second free throw, where is the line in? That makes it 38 to 35. Finally, they'll come back in. If you know she comes in for defense. As Lewis will bring it on the same court. Jenkins also back in for Pasco Delay. Oh, really ripped the front court. Offensive foul is called on the back side. So Parsons must have said he was free. That's his second foul. So Munt going down the ball. Both teams still struggling from the field. Both leaders are shooting 30%. Like a little better than the others, they're only shooting 25%. So Samantha Hanson comes back into Pasco Delay for Parsons. Parsons. Parsons had a lot of play in this second half. She finally gets a rest. Let's see if Samantha Hanson and Williams can match up like they did late in the game yesterday. And uh, the winning shot is good by Fountain. So a big basket by Fountain at the early point, which is 30 to 37. Now Jenkins takes the pass, goes inside. I think the three hits away is a tough pass. That was not a good pass there in both quarters. Jenkins looked like she could have taken a shot and didn't. Found that the other way. Puts up a wild shot, no good. Now tipped away Jenkins going for it. Now on the ground, goes up the ends. Now Bailey, the Otters getting over possession. We have four left minutes to go on this one. Now Bailey, guided by Lewis. Don't know where to find that. Bump sets the screen, she goes around it. Pull up 14 foot, no good. Williams with the rebound. Fights it off. And she thinks Ted Evans will slow things down for Pasco to Lay. Now Williams, guys, he's like, well, I've been 10 foot away, but she's going to the free throw line. So the time Williams is trying to find the assert herself on offense, which is usually what she does right in her career. Now I take us to a time on the floor. Four and on the lead in this second half. Don't go anywhere. This could be a thrilling finish. Pasco to Lay is hanging on dearly. We have 38 37 lead on the basket all the way forward. I chose Division 2 because all things graduate at a higher rate. I can say, take me to home, and be the only part of my community. I chose Division 2 because all things graduate at a higher rate. I think that's what I'm saying. 
Maybe it's where we're located in the heart of Los Angeles. Maybe it's the car of the 20,000 years of the year to know about our world class programs, our world ready faculty, and our dedicated staff. Maybe it's the promise of a rewarding career in nature, education, science, media, or the manifest. Maybe you should find out why. At the beginning of Lifetime Learning, I call Sandra Lowe. All right, now remaining the second half. Last but only for this game, it's like a very slow start in the first half. They struggled for the second night in a row on offense. They got that other one going. They trailed at halftime through the hours. By the line. But then in the second half, both leaders have taken over defensively and started to score offensively. Williams misses the first free throw. So she's unhappy with herself there. They missed the hole. Out of three from the line, she makes that one. That makes it 31 37. 11 points for Sandra Williams. And I said, late in close games, she usually tries the world team to win. We'll see if she can do it. If the goal get a point here, finally, the foul, each and every one of the foul, these patients, that'll be two free throws. Right. Right. So, big foul on Tyson, that'll send Morgan to the line. Both teams well over 10 fouls. Morgan, 4 for 4 from the free throw line. As she misses that free throw, I think. Right on cue, that's her first miss. So, the third miss of the game from the free throw line for the Otters. As Samantha Hilton comes into Parsons. Probably the offense to defense switch there. Which is for Gold Eagles to get the ball to Hilton in the post game. It's not stripped down. Second free throw is good. Then it's a 39 to 38. Find the room for being the ball in the front court. And the four minutes to go on this one. Here, it's just on the dribble. Kicks out to Jenkins. Well, she'll go with a bear. Jenkins. Wow, yeah, shot underneath. Picks it up to turn out better. Boy, not a good shot there. Boom. Trying to force two much. That's not her game. That plays her. And the lead down there. Wow, Jenkins lays it up and in. So unusual for Jenkins to let him play a good there. I think she's thinking about her offense and moving at the other end and it passed her. And the Otters regained the lead 40 to 39, so the Golden Eagles' five point lead is gone. Now Williams, and now the Hanson. Hanson, yes, look at the Hanson there, there you go. There's that Hanson, and St. Williams is not the Hanson. Same one we saw yesterday, second basket for Hanson. Golden Eagles regained the lead 41 to 40. That page up, page up for that, too, not even close, you can see from here. Williams are bringing in the front court. Williams will reset the offense. That's it setting up, but it goes to Kelly Lewis, but she shuffled her feet. By the way, 10 footer, not a good shot. She was not going toward the basket at all, barely coming the other way. Coach Jones telling the team to pick up the ball here. Not helping. Followed by Gibbons. Gibbons, boy, now he fell and she grabbed him. And I took an extra second to the before she got to the basket. Parsons will come back in for basket away. Jefferson and Fountain will come back in for the others. So if not, the Hilton will stick it in. That's a shame after she got that basket. We see if Parsons can get any more on the offense. It's time to win. We'll totally bring it up. Gibbons, Hilton, and Lewis also off after the ball leader. Gibbons has the ball now. Oh, who's the ball that goes into the back court for a regular back violation? Unforced turn over there. Bad pass by Gibbons. Now, Melville finally comes back into the game. Lewis will sit down. Melville has been out for quite a while. He's picking up that fourth foul. She was out for a good portion of the second half. That fourth foul is just to be over now, but now or never. For the gold leader. And Bailey rips it underneath the Jefferson. Picks it up. Pick! Oh, Parsons. Nice play by Parsons. Picking the gold leader. Just coming back the other way. 
that group of guys are raising their prayers for us. Hey, take that thing up under the end of your picture and stop that. Just take things down. So, hey, remember that this is not a That can really make the boat move us. As Billy was around the front gate to talk to Father, they had a bad girl. And I brought a team of those people who passed into taking away. And really, it was a big deal to us. The boat moved us here, stepping up their defense now. Our Williams, sideline steps into their team. Gives it off to Melville, luckily, and she goes down. Gibbons gets taken to Parsons. Brings up the three pair in the corner after he had no good. Williams fades, but he got gets it. And a hard ball is tied, but Williams went down hard. Possession, unfortunately, goes to the Otters. Now, second throw back to Sandra Williams. Well, he Parsons with that open three pointer over the huge shots. He just could not knock it down. Parsons only one of four shooters in the game. She just only two threes. So we'll see who the Otters break she down the stretch. We just don't have a minute left. So we'll up the next spot on the floor. So then Fountain and Cordial, Jefferson and Bailey are out there. And the front court is Morgan. You think they're trying to get the ball to Jefferson, but the ball of Eagles have been bagging inside to try to deny her the ball. Not Bailey. As they do it again. Two players by Jefferson. And the other one has lots of time out to tap things over. 18 on the side pack, 22 on the game clock. We'll take a quick break. Costa Rica is hanging on to a 41 to 40 lead. Thanks, <laughs> So I think I have that has the benefit of my family with over 80 years of experience in the automotive industry. We can honestly say that there is no better time than now to purchase or lease a new or pre-owned vehicle at Sierra Outdoor about Monday. We have a terrific inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles, but more importantly, we have an experienced and knowledgeable staff to guide you with the luxury treatment that you should expect as an actual customer. Get the value you deserve at Sierra Outdoor about Monday with the new plus years of experience on Monday in the morning. I don't see a name. The cast is only hanging on to a 41 40 lead. This is a big game as far as the conference standings go. Gold Eagles, if they were to win this game, would meet for a cast game on the day in the second place in the conference. 51 Chico State. With a loss, they would put them away as a game and a half behind the Otters for second place and probably put them back in the pack. In the standings, the bunch of teams are tied at 3 and 2. Five teams between the Gold Eagles tied in the standings at 3 and 2 for third place. So this game is a big turn either way. Uh, Bill Jones is talking to the referee about something. Uh, I believe there's a problem with the uniform. Sandra Williams is changing jerseys. did look like she had blood on her jersey. Blood from, from earlier, but she's played the whole game with it. But I guess they said they can't change their jerseys. She's wearing number 32 now. So that is to Sandra Williams, even though she's wearing 32. So she's obviously. Either got more blood on Jersey or the referees decided that she couldn't play with it anymore. Now, Cordial went down the ball. As the referees are saying, apparently Williams has to come out of the game. Oh, no, they're, they're checking. Apparently, the, the cut was not. Was not uh, so, yeah, that sort of put sleep around her elbow. So, that's obviously where she was cut was on the elbow when she went down hard on that hard ball. So, she's back on the court with a tape elbow. And apparently, Fitzgerald, I don't know what is going on, but we are not satisfied. I saw it change jerseys again, this. Couldn't tell it away here. She had to change into one jersey and also to change into another one. She took, I believe she took Lee Price's number. Oh, excuse me, 12. So she took jersey number 12, which was Alyssa Hansen. 
Well, what the heck? You're going to go crazy on those. That's another situation. Finally, on the line. I'm going to go to 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 the line. I'm Thanks to Williams, I gave it to Anson and Stitch, he's only 22. Oh, excuse me, that's Bison. So Bison's, I have to say to Williams, back to Bison's. Bison's driving inside, and he picks up the picture on Big Bison's and Big Bison's. He's the guy who's a big fan, 32 to 32. 24 seconds to run, now over 10 seconds. Then he goes over there, Bison's, and now he's got time on it. So, good basket for that deep passes. That was only a quick point of the game. A second basket, but it came in coming a big time. She drove all the way in and laid it in. Well, I'm surprised the Ivy's letting go all the way to the basket without double teaming her. But they did. So, back and forth, she saw battle here. It's 33 to 42. Teams have traded leads the last couple of minutes. One team will get the lead, one the other team will. This is the fifth lead change in that last four minutes. When one team scores a basket, the other team scores, comes out down and scores. So we'll see if that is good. One team scores six seconds remaining. Angel got their last basket. We'll see if they put it in their hands again. The top pack is off. So we'll see if that is with the last shot of the game. Or if they take a shot with a few seconds left to see if they can get an offensive rebound. But that's all they have to play out of the best defensive unit now. I'm kind of surprised there's no more Jenkins in the game right now. He has Melville, Lincoln Gibbons, Chicago Williams, Pete Parsons, and Terry Lewis. All in down to Bailey. Early with 17 seconds. With 15, Williams on. They're probably going to run down the track right to the end. Now Bailey with 11. 10. Parsons goes back there. Bailey. Around Parsons. Oh, Bailey! Williams! That's the game over! Williams! That's five with 3.8 seconds remaining. Yeah, Williams almost turned it over there. Luckily, she stabbed before she could. Now we're on Jefferson. Yeah, big defensive play there at Parsons. He went on Bailey and first to the far down and moves the ball. It's how the Williams is going to pick up for B. Parsons. Bailey has come down clutch, and kind of clutch on both ends of the floor here at the end of the game. And Williams is shooting two free throws. These are both big free throws. She really needs both of them. He was clearly for, well, I think it's kind of easy, but she needs the free throw. She doesn't lose that free throw. So three point eight seconds left, we're still counting the time to get the ball up the court. Craig Lyons has got a three point shot. Twelve points for the Sound of Williams. He's the leading player in the game. Look again for Pascal Lowe. As we know, we know the man has got five time out here. Three point eight seconds left to drop the play. Back in the free throw. Of course, there's some school of thought to say if Williams misses this free throw, the battle will be a better fit because it will take Lyons. A second, the team gets the lead out, and then they wouldn't have much time to come up court and get a shot for the win. If Williams makes this free throw, they still have 3.8 seconds left to win down the ball and go up court and try to get a three to win the game. You get a foul to win. And of course, that's really only two to win. If the goal leader is up two, I think it beats you. So Williams really needs to make this free throw. She's three or five from the free throw line in the game, four of ten from the floor. She's got 35 minutes, so she's got around seven minutes again. So you can't understand the big plays by Pete Parsons here in the last minute. Making a big layup, give the double leaders the lead, and then making the big defensive play on the other end on Andrew Bailey to force the turnover. And Williams, where's it on the free throw? Where's it on? So it's 45 42. Great leader comes up back with 3.8 seconds left. Passing down to Fama with two. If one final up to Kroger, that is going to be the top of the Herself wide open. On the wing right there, and she pulled up with 
Tim Hazelberg is not clear as Arnold. But the Adams were celebrating Marvin Bergen after the end of the game. And they certainly did not. They still have five more minutes to play. And well, that's certainly going to be the problem for Pass State LA. You have to see how they come out here in this overtime. So it's like a good pick and be back at the overtime here on the Pass State LA Fox Network. I'm sorry if it wasn't true because I think it's going to be a higher rate. I can stay close to the home and do what you call with me. I chose Division 2 because I can get the name for it. I can find some of that too. I play Division 2 because Cash is inspired. Students have more time than others. Not with you, but with the National Championship. I chose Division 2 for all these reasons and more. I say, 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 just five minutes ago, that's a tough day for Casper Valley. It looked like they had this game won at 35 to 42. And they said, it's a sound of rage making that second free throw. It did the honors time. It's inbound the ball. And the key was the inbound pass as the ball was inbound to almost the midcourt. And Fagnett took a couple of dribbles and was able to find Cordial on the wing there about 30 feet away. Throw that three corner to try to do it. Not the bedroom, boy. I, I could see it all right in the state as a state. And, for nothing but luck. So we're in overtime. Parsons will jump with Jefferson. Jefferson wins the jump off the bailey. So we'll see if that's the first pass in the way of taking the cover in the overtime. And turn this one out. This would be a crazy loss if they get this one going in overtime. Now Bailey. Gets over the five one now. Five one goal by Williams. Gets back to Morgan. Mark Angel. The hero for one other day. And he's looking for the back. Jefferson picks up the Cordial with three. Jefferson plays up the lead to fit in and out. That's it for now. And when they call a foul, we'll see who they get it on. Morgan is battling with Lacey Gibbons. I believe they call that Morgan. They do. So that'll be free throws as both teams are out of fouls. So Lacey Gibbons will go to the line to keep three. He has not been much of a factor in this game. Only four points on 2 6 shooting. Gibbons has walked into the free throw line. So Gibbons going through the free throw line. How many years he's made 9 of 11 free throws, over 80%. He's a clear 79% free throw shooter. So if he, if he can give the Golden Eagles a lead here, 35 seconds into overtime. He rattles in the free throw. Perkins comes back in for the Otters. Morgan will sit down. So Gibbons, if I can see you from Hanford, looking to give the Golden Eagles a two point lead. Rainbow free throw goes in. So it makes a 37 to 45. The Golden Eagles start facing the overtime. And that's important with all the momentum that not only they got with that last second three. Now Bailey, they've got the Pedro. Nagel's got him in now. And then Jefferson, there by Tyson's. Yeah, stripped away. Hit off them. No good. That was called. See if they get Gibbons out of the lead center. Well, they've got Parsons instead. That's a surprise. I thought they were going to go Lacey Gibbons. Thanks for doing that. I guess they said Parsons and Eagle were out. That's important because that's a fifth foul on Parsons. So he's in foul trouble. They thought they did. She's the second goal to go play with four fouls. Margot's played with four fouls for a while here. So the first three throws missed by Jefferson. She's looking to flip the pair. And if he misses that one, too, so two big miss free throws by Jefferson. Four big is a big left. Jefferson only wins the fourth in the free throw out of the game. That Margaret puts back there wide right open 15 feet, knocks it down. He got that one right on the ground and knocks it down for a long period. That's a 31 to 45. Mark Virgil has won the first point. Well done, there you go. Mark Virgil with the ball, got the feet there, put 15 foot high up and she knocks it down. So that's the first point of the overtime period for Monterey Bay. That's the 49 47 Golden Eagles. Mark Virgil gets off to Lacey Gibbons. Gibbons gets over to Williams. Williams looking for someone to give it to, gives it to Parsons at the elbow. 
Carson's backs in. Takes a shot, kicks it out to Lewis. Lewis picks up a wide yeah, 10 foot runner. They'll give Melville tries to snap the ball, but it goes out to Hurtman. So the Otters will bring it up looking to tie this one. This has been a back and forth game, most of the second half, and in the overtime. Neither team is going to make it a fiddle. Now, only to Jefferson. Parsons, hey, that's it for Parsons at that time of the game. Parsons stopped at the ball and committed the foul, so she was fouled out. So she's the first player in the game to foul off either team. She comes with five points. Two or five shooting. One of two free throws. Plus, remember, though, she had those two big plays at the end of the regulation, but we might not be in overtime right now. So Devin Riesabas comes into a place Jefferson goes back to the line looking to tie the game. He just missed a pair. And he misses that one. So Jefferson really in a front at the free throw line. One of five from the line. She's really holding her team. As Jenkins comes back in, Lewis will sit down. So Jenkins sat down for quite a while. She's played 25 minutes so far in the game. Jefferson looking to make one out of four free throws here. And she rallies out with him finally. So two points to Jefferson. Hanks comes in for the Otters. Jefferson will sit down. To get there, but she couldn't make free throws. And Margo will bring it up with a one-point lead. Everybody goes out of the way. Lewis with the Bills. They lose it. Another big win for the Golden Eagles. Margo was all by herself. But she didn't use the backboard. She tried to roll it in. But as she uses gas, she makes that, that layup. Bad break there. Now the Otters with a chance to get the lead. Pedro is in the same place that she did a three at the end of the regulation. Hey, wide yeah, running, no good. Thanks for leaving on that. It's a new spot that I put on Bailey. Jenkins went down hard. Well, she's taken up. Hopefully she's okay. She gets up and looks like she can walk it off. So Bailey with her third foul. Jenkins will go to the free throw line and keep three. Jenkins has not scored in the game. She's missed all three of her shots. She does have three rebounds and two assists. Jenkins on the year has only attempted seven free throws. She's made five of them. Both of them are doing well from the free throw line in the game. They can 15 out of 20. And he rolls in the first free throw. That's the first point for Jenkins. It's a 50 to 48. We've got 227 remaining during the overtime. This has been a close, exciting game, even though it's been low scoring. You figured it would be low scoring with Cross State Monterey Bay, the best defense in the conference, and one of the best in the country coming in here. That's what they're doing good. Fighting for rebounds, Hurtman. And Bailey will quickly bring it up into the front court. Bailey will take better of it and back it out. The Riders will have another chance to try and tie this one. Now Bailey kicks it out to Hurtman. Eight to three, gets up to Fountain. But Fountain. Jenkins, I thought she would get the new ball goes to Lynch and she lays it up and in. Well, Jenkins, I thought she was hit. And Lynch said, play on. And Lynch got the loose ball after the shot and put it in. We'll tie the 50. Now Jenkins gets on the Gibbons. Williams on the baseline. Gets one of the guard ball. Gibbons, one of them still in for three. Not close. Williams with the rebound. Beat the rebound for Williams and she'll back it out. Pulls it for 16 for the Mason Dan! Good shot by the Sunday Rams! 15 points in the hand, gives the Golden Eagles a 52 to 50 lead. Now Bailey brings it in the front court. Dan's running for defense. Now Rivers throwing away, finally gets it. Pulls it for wide open 14 for the Red Dan! Rivers gets the lead, that's a big bet for Tuscan Owens. Finally, it's wide open. She's made those shots in this game, but she couldn't make that one. Well, we're down to a pitch in a minute here to go. Williams goes back to Bagwell. Bagwell back to the Williams. Williams, he was about to pass the lead! Unbelievable, and on the loose ball, Jenkins commits a foul. The Sandra Williams goes his second lap of the game, and the Bills Eagles are just, you know, just think about all the missed laps they had this game, especially in the first half, but here in the second half, that was a beautifully run backcourt play. Margo gave it to a right in rhythm. And he just could not convert. And then Jenkins makes a fourth foul. So Bailey will go to the line. 
Bailey really was four for four from the free throw line, so this is the player that always won at the line. And he goes in and 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 so a bit of bad fortune followed by a bit of good fortune. As we know, we know her name was, I believe the official facts were on time out and she didn't. So the Chandra Williams will bring up 52, 51 gold legal. Great position here. We'll see what the Chandra Williams can do. Let's go to Melba. Now give it over to Jenkins. So now the Hanson back into the gold legals. Give it almost loses the ball. Let's have to Jenkins. Chandra Williams comes back there. Now Hanson over to Melville, 10 seconds on the shot clock, 40 on the game clock. Now Melville, that's going to drive in there, throws it up, and gets a javelin. There's some struggle there. He has to battle, it's looking like he might have kicked someone's foot. It's got the javelin, 35 million seconds left. Now he's had the ball, they can't pick the last shot. They can't pick the last shot, they can't pick the last shot, they can't pick the last shot. 31 and a half seconds left, so we'll take a quick break here. That's the only time to hold on to a 52 to 51 lead. We are the former reporters of the NCAA student. And this is why all of us have become fair and simply humble in sports. Then we're on the last second to know we're in the second in the early time. Excuse me, first early time period. I was in down in the back, that one, not the bowl. The shot clock and game clock about five seconds separated. So let's see how long they're going to play. Bailey drives and says, Hits against it! There's no ball! So a big turn over there. They're going with the ball, gets off the wheel. It's just because they decide the rooms, they do. Williams gets off the wheel, so they find the right person for the Golden Eagles. Williams is the one who won at the free throw line. So a big turn over there, Bailey threw it right to Melville under the basket. Don't know who he was looking for. But the Golden Eagles got a big turnover, and this is almost like deja vu from regulation. The Lottie's had a chance to win the game, and they turned it over. And then Williams went to the free throw line and made two free throws. And he mixes that free throw, so it did not happen this time. So much for deja vu. Williams needs to make this one with a two point game, and he does. So it's 52 to 51, 16.2 seconds remaining. Well, you hope that this free throw that Sandra Williams doesn't come back to help the Golden Eagles. She's been good in this game, though. He has 16 points to lead the way. She's 5 and 8 from the free throw line. Jones has 10 rebounds. So a double double. Very impressive. He's along with two assists and four steals. So she filled out the box score in 30 minutes. So a full game is worth of playing time. Well, she's the only baby to play in double figures. Kelly Lewis has nine. I'm going to play well, though. The Addies are led by Fatman, who has 10 points. Kelly has nine. He was stuck with big baskets at the end of the regulation. Let's see what the Lions do if they go for two in the tie. Or if they go for three in the win. They also see if they want to try to take the last shot. The regulation, they did not do that. Then down in the bar is Morgan. Major Bailey Bailey just to the cabin out there for the others. Gibbons is on Bailey. Bailey comes to the front court, two plays go down. Bailey backs it up. She's off the board, but she's shuffling her feet. Seven seconds left, now Bailey is six, down inside. Up and under, no good! Texas and Dixon Uda have two seconds, and she is down! Tough first play. And of course, Texas is going to the line, that's how the Addies want to see. Sandra Williams in the second foul. Texas is only two and six from the free throw line in the game. She is standing all kinds of ways, so it would be something else if she could make two free throws here. If he got you, then why is the time to select? 
Big Fish Think Tank is their day. So Jefferson Lewis and Big Fish Think Tank is going to be two seconds left. Both of them are going to be going to have to back side here. Jefferson Lewis and Big Fish Think Tank. That's what Coach Jimenez is telling me. Mr. Fink will keep going to get the lead out, but he has to hit the lead. Don't think that was very good. That was loose. That was the thing on the run. That was the thing on the run. That was the thing on the run. Unbelievable. I believe he's never there. He has that lead on. And instead of grabbing the bear, he's really ready to go. She kicked it instead. And he went right to fight with nothing as he can do. Jenny on the spot, and she laid it in at the buzzer. Unbelievable. Time is going to be through, and you are going to a second overtime if you can believe it. I can't. So I guess we'll be right back in a minute here. With double overtime, don't go anywhere, boy. You wouldn't you would forgive yourself if you just go to this crowd, boy. Maybe if you're a little bit in the heart of Los Angeles. Maybe it's a part of a 20,000 years to know about our world class program, our world really competent, and our dedicated staff. Maybe it's a part of a rewarding career in nursing, education, science, and media as well as in nonfiction. Maybe we should find out why. A tradition of lifetime learning by Cassio Delo. Well, by the way, we still have better overtime here. Well, I hope you watch this one. It's been a thrilling game, but the good news is that this game won twice and let it get away. Second time they're on a pickup by Fountain at the buzzer. The other is a few buzzer beaters to turn this game. Margaret, not open for three. Good news, it's not the answer. Unless you get in front of the lead, I'll go back to Buckman. I wonder how much he's had. The good news have left. After having the game won twice and not being able to finish it. Now, Buckman. Looks it inside to Jefferson. Jefferson goes by Smoke to Hanson. Hope you're up there, but a foul is called. Well, it looks like Hanson was straight up on the defense, but then. Oh, it's Chicago. So, the second foul is Smoke to Hanson. Then the blue person slide out in the first overtime. So, Gordon was the one out there. Hanson in the game now. Jefferson goes back to the line, and of course, she missed those last two free throws at the end of the first overtime. He works up for a call. Put the alleys on top, we're in double overtime. But the alleys, a left free throw goes in. That's a 55 to 53. The alleys really had in the first overtime. The big leaders were ahead the entire time until that last basket at the base of the tire. Now, Lacey Gibbons, they're going to Melville, now William. Anthony sets the screen, she wants the ball, she gets the ball. That's in. Up and under, really puts it up and in. So she didn't get back to the channel that time. And Anthony wants to get some good basket. How's it going to 55? Four minutes to go in double overtime. Not Rachel. Handling the ball out to Bailey. Bailey has had the long show of the ball handling. Here since late in the second half. Not Rachel. Played by Melville. Thanks to Shaq. Get us in the lane. There's a lot Big hit, big hit, and Jefferson pulls the ring up. Melville tips the ball out of bounds. There's two. Now they go. Once again, Melville took in the ball and started grabbing it. Oh, Jefferson looks like she's not on the rebound. She goes out of the game now. Munch comes in. The Riders are going to burn the shot clock. Aaron Pickett comes in for defense to play for Kelly Lewis. Now Munch gets more to Bailey. Bailey over to Fulger. Fulger there by Melville. Now to Sandra Williams. And now Banks gets it off Pager. Pulls up for a quick three pointer. In and out and back in again. How about that for a bounce? So Pager had Banks down with high and low and went in. So it's not great. It's a 58 to 55 outers. Now Bigger Jenny Jenkins. Jenkins drives inside. What is that the noise in the end? So Jenkins only hit that part of the game. 50 to 50 cents, he knocks away the pass. There's one of the crowd, send it to Beckman. Now he's going down the barrel, 27 on the shot clock. Three and five remaining here in double overtime. For a game that's still up in a low scoring game. I certainly don't know how high the score with the overtime. It's tied at 
35 at the end of regulation. 35 to 53 at the end of first overtime. And I thought that the ball came away out of bounds and gave it to the Eagles. Raymond did think that she was not going to hand on it. Yeah, Raymond will bring it up. 13 still shooting daily over 30% from the floor. Now Barbara gets over Gibbons. Here we go with Raymond Gibbons. Samantha Hudson sets a screen. Jenkins takes the pass, now gives the pass to Williams. Picking on the back Williams to Bagwell. Bagwell, looking for someone to give it to, gives it back there to Gibbons. He loses the ball after he's out of bounds. Bad time for a turn on the way. Red Eagles, that's a 10 foot turnover of the game. That was a 28 turnover. And it has certainly not been playing basketball by any stretch. But it has certainly been very competitive. We seem to be seeing even in that team. And Bailey brings the ball in the front court. I guess he couldn't figure that out by the fact that he's double overtime. <laughs> now Bailey, looking over to Morgan, goes up for three, knocks it down. So Bailey, over the top court, gives the audience a three point lead. I said a long time ago, the audience knocked down those three pointers, look out, and it looks like the final is starting to go down. Now Jenkins, with the back court of Margaret. Margaret puts it up in a big basket by Margaret. She had two minutes to go. 61 59 mile a day. Bailey will slowly bring it into full court. Now Bailey, down by Williams. Now Pedro, Margo right on him, throws out his bench. Pedro looking for someone to set a screen. Jefferson does. He goes around it. He tries to Morgan. Now Bailey. Over to Pedro, goes up a high up and three in and out. Jenkins gets the rebound. Off to Margo, one on two, now given to Jameson. Goes up for an 18-4, makes a big deal set by Dave Margo. Now took a lot of bucks to get that shot. Give him back and she walked it down. Great 13 point, and it's tied at 61. Dave Margo gets the four quick points to catch the others again. And we're about ready to play 10 minutes to go. In double overtime, not barely. Over to Pedro. Pedro going by Margo. Going over to Bailey. Bailey goes down the screen. All the way up. And he goes up. Goes the way up. Takes the bits of his bear. Hard bear with Samantha Hanson. But the possession line goes through the others. Only two seconds on the shot clock. Kevin Rizabas comes in for the Red Eagles. I believe with a hard bear there, there will be a release that is. There's an injured player. It might be Bailey. I don't think it happened. Over behind the Otter's basket. Coach Amena is over there to check on her. And I think it is Andrew Bailey. I don't see her on the court. Yes, it is. So Bailey got injured early in the game, and they said to come off with an injury early in the game and came back in, and she might have re injured her leg. Coach Amena is talking to her. Bailey certainly has played a lot of minutes, even with that injury. She's played 31 minutes in the game. That's quite a bit. The piece she's up there She has five points, even though she has not made a field goal. All five of her points have come from the free throw line. And it looks like they're going to be a timeout on the floor by the Otters. So it's like a quick break in double overtime. 52.1 seconds remaining. The Otters will have the ball when we come back. Tied at 61. <laughs> I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I they might reset it to like 15, but they only have two on the shot clock, so if that's the case, the others with two seconds to get off the shot here. They're going to down the ball. Quick running. Yeah, it opens Jefferson 16 30. No good. Jenkins gets the rebound, so a great ball for the Red Eagles. 37 seconds left. Shot clock's about 18 seconds ahead of the game clock. Jenkins brings it on the front court. Out at 61. That's the best move here. Here's a beautiful one. Come on, Jenkins, you're a good basket. 
I had that one on the front door. So I got about six seconds to the boot camp. I don't know who was at the hands of them. We were playing 63, 10 seconds here, but shot like his ass. He said, no, James, guys, it's all right. James, that guy, it's all right. He's the boss. He's all the way. He's 18 seconds on the clock. Now 17. Williams, he's all the way. He's the boss. Now Williams at 13. Dick is at 12. There's like a 10 foot in a bad shot. Oh, damn, look at the way they're on the bottom of the team. Now, three seconds, or three seconds, two seconds. Really, nobody wants to play. And we're going to do a mega overtime. Can you believe it? Yeah, he's doing that over time. It's about eight seconds to get more. You have to think how you're in the game. And then we're holding the ball up. They think they're all good. I don't know what happened to them. Oh, it's crazy. But the game leaders are taking it. Dr. Williams Jenkins took a really bad shot. We had to stay about 12 seconds on the clock and she put up that jump and was a low ball. Virgil touched the ladder, so that the one out of bounds. The official said it stayed in. And then the others just held on to the ball and just did nothing with it like the time went out. So apparently we're going to be here all night, folks. We're going to play at the chair, get some popcorn, get some dinner, whatever it takes. I mean, this is the never ending game right now. We're going to get a triple overtime. Time at 63. I personally have been a couple of triple overtime games a couple of years ago. I, I think this might be my first one as a broadcaster. But I, uh, several years ago, I've been in two triple overtime games. I believe they're both men's games. Uh, I don't think I've ever been in a women's triple overtime game, so this is a first for me. And I don't know how many triple overtime games you've watched, but it's certainly exciting basketball. If anybody can get the win, boy, it's just crazy. Third Lucas have had leads towards the end of. Regulation and both overtime periods, and it's not been able to hold on. Of course, this is the first time the Otters were not able to win the game, excuse me, tie the game with a buzzer beater, like they did in the regulation in the first overtime. So the ball tripped with respect, triple overtime. Don't fall back up for the Otters. Three with the ball, so she must be all right. Well, by Williams. Now, Gibbons picks it up. Melville, Jenkins, and Smith, and that's an also out there for the Golden Eagles. Now Bailey drives inside, kicks it out to Hurtin, he takes a three. Kicks out to Jefferson. Seven on the shot clock, in low. Picks it up and blows the hair up. So Fadman blows the hair up there. Jenkins coming in the way, goes around Fadman. Jenkins looking to drive. Pass over the dribble, kicks out to Hurtin. Hurt, six feet, and they're good. Hurtin gets a little rebound, falls on the floor. Goes out to Hurtin. Bailey comes the other way. Teams must be exhausted right now. The figure with all this game time. That day, wide right open for three. No good. Half the rebound, Samantha Hudson. Hip up to Chicago Williams. She comes back. Run the four minutes to go. Run triple overtime. Now, Mary Jenkin drives inside. Kicks it off to Margaret. Now, Williams over to Margaret. Comes up to three pointer in the corner. Then they get Samantha Hudson off the rebound. Gets knocked out of bounds and stays fast in the way. Now they're going to use that clock. Morgan and Mintz come back in for the Otters. Actually, Morgan and Daddy Mintz. Definitely. Look like she's going to come in. She does now. So the Otters trying to get some fresh bodies. Kelly Lewis comes back in for the Gold Eagles. I think he's going to come in for Lacey Gibbons. So Gibbons will sit down. The Gold Eagles are pretty much gone with this unit for all of overtime. Except for Samantha Hanson, who came in when Pete Parson fell out. Watch Sandra Williams, takes one on the screen. There's a tight touch, and then it's his head! Here's the little girl that takes Sandra Williams. Take the basket and sit down her arms. She beat the three point play. She has 18 points on the game. Sandra Williams has played 46 minutes. Well, she's the only one in this game. Here's the power. Come in and Jacob will sit down. That was the most minutes by far played by anybody on either team. As she walks down the free throw, it's at 66 to 63. As she plays the first points of this third overtime. And right after the fifth overtime, she gets a back down by Nigel. And Nigel looking to drive, can't find a lane. Gets it outside the phone net. Found that with high water. Goes around the screen, picked up by Samantha Hansen, picks it out to Beckman. 
Oh, the first one on the south block. Pairs up with Finkel on 15 footers. She knew it was no good. Back to that one belly with the rebound. But you can expect shots to be short like that. There was tight leg for this game. As we approach a minute to go, Pedro. Looking over to Harrison. Now Fountain. Over around the screen. Ron Powell. There's no great boy. There's no foul there. There's a late whistle. Looks like they were left out of Gary Powell. Got the shot, but I believe they called the foul. They called the foul. Kelly Lewis is still an open foul. So Powell did look like a piece of the shot, but he said Lewis Powell So Fountain will be going back to the line where she just missed two free throws. It was a tough opportunity to give the Irish the lead. She goes three from the free throw line again. That is only 16 of 27 as a team. No good. The Lotties are just shooting themselves in the foot time after time from the free throw line. Lacey Gibbons comes up in the past little way. So Fountain will be looking to tie this one up and make a free throw. Makes the free throw of the 13 points. Uh, ties the game 68 to 68. So, under a minute today, we are tied again. Now, William Jenkins over to Gibbon. Let's see if one team can finally finish this team off. Hopefully, the Gold Eagles, as Lewis, puts up a win. Three footer once again. So, once again, Gold Eagles have the lead in the final minute of the third overtime. They have the lead at the end of regulation. The end of the first overtime, the third overtime, the second overtime, and the third overtime, and they've lost every single lead. And the Tigers are always so great there. So the hero of regulation puts the tie away and she says, my bad. That's a big turnover. There's only a two-second difference between shot clock and game clock. So I think that is really half the foul. Well, we just pretty much hold on to it until the end. As Gibbons gets the ball. After Mary Jenkins. Jenkins gets off to Hanson. Hanson looks so good to give off to Jenkins. Then we just go around the bar. Now Williams, finally the out of style. Coach Amanda is very upset. They seem to not fire earlier. She wanted them to fire right earlier. So this time the Gold Eagles have a two-point lead. They decide to just go into the lane. And we've heard this story before. Then the Gold Eagles decide to go into the lane two free throws. We get the Gold Eagles a three-point lead. Coach Amanda is tied up at the buzzer. And then at the end of the first every time the Gold Eagles had a couple free throws. And here's that one. When the Gold Eagles had one point, Lucy moved one, and the Otters tied up at the end of the game, at the end of at the buzzer. So Williams makes the free throw. Now the big pass is tied out to try an icer. 12.5 seconds remaining. So Williams will a huge free throw here. And she can make this would be a two position game. And it would certainly reduce the chances the Otters have to make a deal if they come back this time. As Williams on the game, she certainly is the player of the game again. She has 22 points. 10 of 15 from the floor. She's 7 of 10 from the free throw line. Going on with 10 rebounds and 4 steals and 2 assists. She's played 50 minutes. I think I can say with confidence that this year has never played more minutes than she has tonight in any game. That's an incredible amount of minutes. Lacey Gibbons has played 41 minutes. As Williams looking to make this. She possesses the game, and she does. Good free throw. 72 68. Hopefully, that may finally do it as Gary inbounds the ball, comes to half break. And seven. Gary with six. Gary with Gary with Gary with five. Turns up for a wide three point, and they're with two. Gary will keep the line with one, and the game is over. Finally! It's long. It's the long, long game that's finally ended. The final score, basically. So the Gold Eagles in that big, big win with a lot of fortitude here. And for all the adversity they face at the end of regulation and the end of the first overtime, that really gives a lot of credit to not only the players but the coaching staff to have the will to set that off and come home and come back and pull this one out. They certainly could have favored their tents and got to defeat it, and they did not. So, why was they down in the grass? A great, great game. The best in LA. They improved with 94 on the year. 4 and 2 in the CCAA. They leaped for our best in Monterey Bay. He's got 6 and 2 on the year. 3 and 2 in the CCAA. 
So I think big wins for the Golden Eagles. Let's see if we get a pair of energy in here. Thank you because we're doing a high school energy in here in a minute. I think that Cage Magdal is going to have to be interviewed, so we're going to talk to Cage Magdal here in a second. So I'd like to anyway. Okay, let's just put this out here. Thank you for joining us. I don't know, I don't think you're going to allow me to this is. Talk about that. Oh. Oh. You can't keep it. Can you work? Okay. Okay, so I'm actually sorry about that. Okay, I'm going to put that up to you. So people can hear you. Can you put this thing up there? Uh, I'm not sure. Sorry about that. Thank you. 